Welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia, a great college town where the fans are always fanatical about their Mountaineers. But tonight, the atmosphere is electric with number three, Virginia Tech, in town. Next year, Tech moves to the ACC. The series will continue, but tonight is a chance for the Mountaineers to give the Hokies an unwanted parting gift and do damage to Tech's national title hopes. And here comes upset-minded West Virginia on a Mountaineer field before a raucous crowd of nearly 60,000 on hand to watch Wednesday night football in the last head-to-head -head meeting for West Virginia and Virginia Tech as fellow members of the Big East Conference. Last year, West Virginia traveled to Blacksburg and upset then number 12 Virginia Tech. Quincy Wilson with a 42-yard touchdown run. That gave the Mountaineers the lead. Down by three in the final seconds, Brian Randall threw an interception in the end zone. Brian King with the pick, and West Virginia had the upset by three. Sean McDonough along with Rod Gilmore and Craig James, delighted to have you with us. Many of you saw that game last year on ESPN. Many of you also saw West Virginia nearly pull off one of the biggest upsets of this season at Miami about three weeks ago. Craig, can they do it tonight? Absolutely they can do it. I mean, this is a 2-4 and four team, but don't be fooled by that record. This is a football team who's been on the road. They almost beat Miami, came down to the last few seconds there. There. This is a football team that's going to challenge Virginia Tech. I'm really excited about this game. I want to find out how good Virginia Tech is. I've heard a lot about them. I want to see their speed. I want to see their athleticism. D'Angelo Hall, if you return a punt tonight, hats off to you. Yeah, but your question is, on the road, can they handle the road and the crowd? Vatek's been playing most of their games at home. And if they can handle the road, can they handle Quincy Wilson? You know who I'm talking about. You watch the Miami game. Watch this play. Maybe the play of the year in college football. Screen pass. Wilson out. Side, delivers a blow, jumps over a guy, gets a touchdown. It's that kind of performance that they'll need tonight if they're going to pull off the upset. Well, if he does a hurdle job tonight, <laughs> they'll go crazy here. <laughs> He's Virginia strong Tech enough. comes to town 6-0, and oh, but largely untested. And five of those six games at home in Blacksburg. They're playing here on an overcast and blustery night. 43 degrees and dropping rapidly. We had an off and on rain here today, and there is the chance of some more precipitation, maybe even some snow in the higher elevations of the beautiful mountain state of West Virginia. The Mountaineers won the toss and deferred, and Virginia Tech elected to receive. So Brad Cooper will kick off to Mike Emo and Cedric Humes. And it comes down to Humes, the sophomore from Virginia Beach. He returns across the 25 to the 27-yard line. A 17-yard return. Tech on offense, led by Brian Randall, the junior from Williamsburg, Virginia. It isn't often you hear a coach say a player has been perfect, but when we spoke with Frank Beamer, the head coach of the Hokies yesterday, he said, Randall has been perfect, accurate in his throwing and decision-making, a great threat, both running and throwing the ball. They open in the eye formation with the fullback Doug Eastlick in front of Kevin Jones. And Randall lost the snap and was forced to fall on it. Back at the 24-yard line, a loss of two on the play. The rest of the Virginia Tech offense, Jones working on a string of four straight 100-yard rushing games. The wideouts are Hamilton and Wilford, and we'll see three tight ends, including Keith Willis. And the offensive line, a good group. Anchored by Jake Grove, the All-American candidate at center. Jimmy Martin, the left tackle, playing with an injured elbow, an injury suffered in practice during the 10-day span between games. Each of these teams was off this past Saturday. They're working on a week and a half of preparation. Jones up the middle to the 28, perhaps the 29. West Virginia with a unique 3-3-5 look on defense. The front three of Hunter Lynch and Bluford, a bit undersized. Outstanding linebackers. That's the strength of the defense with Lenort between Wiley, another All-American candidate, and Jerko. And in the secondary, it's Jones, King, Washington, Lorello, and Frazier. And onto the field comes D'Angelo Hall, top of your screen, nearest the Virginia Tech sideline. The three-way threat, offense, defense, and special teams. And they go to him a lot in just this situation, third down. Whistle stop the play. Sean, right at the top, we talked about whether Virginia Tech can handle the crowd. Craig, 
two out of the three plays, they've not handled it. Fumbled snap, and then a delay of game. Uh, you know, exactly right on the road for the first time in a hostile environment. And and I said, you know, earlier on, Brian Randall's got to play poised, good football. He can't make mistakes. And exactly what West Virginia wanted to have happen here at the beginning of a ball game. There are two fouls on the play. Delay against the offense. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. It was Pac-Man Jones of West Virginia who committed a terrible penalty, the personal foul, and here it is. The whistle stops, and here comes Jones, boom, laying the hit on Ernest Wilfred. Yeah, I'm not so sure because it's pretty loud. I'm going to give Jones the benefit of the doubt there. I mean, he sees a guy coming across into his territory, and if he hasn't heard the whistle, then, you know, can he hold up? I wonder if the official didn't like the idea that the, the hand went towards the head. And, and I'll tell you this. Coming out as an official in a game like this, a hostile environment, you send a message right now. We're not going to tolerate any kind of excessive hitting in this ball game. Well, that's a big penalty. It would have been third down and 13 for Virginia Tech. Instead, first and 10 at the 39-yard line. West Virginia has been penalty prone. Virginia Tech, the least penalized team in the Big East. Jones, a nice bounce to the outside. And lowers his shoulder for a couple more. Out near the 44-yard line, Jones, the junior from Chester, Pennsylvania, taken down by Lance Frazier. Question is... He's your Heisman guy, isn't he? Well, I said he's a Heisman guy. Uh -huh. I don't know that he's my Heisman guy, but a lot of guys might vote for him. He's had four straight games over 100 yards. There's no question he's a talented running back. Will he show up in the big games now? They have some big ones coming up, including tonight. He's got to perform on the big stage. Well, in this game here tonight, he's going to get a lot of two tight ends, power football, a chance to go against his 3-3-5 defense. If he's got it in him, tonight's a big night. Saw the graphic he wore number seven last year. We'll tell you the reason why he changed the number in a moment. Here's Randall. Breaks one tackle, then goes down at the 45. Fred Bluford made the first hit. Jones changed his number because after the San Francisco Bowl at the end of last season, he returned home to find that the son of his grade school coach had died. And when he played for that coach, he wore number 25, so he changed to the number 25 in memory of his former coach's late son. He's worked hard, and, and he's a good player. I, and again, this is one of the reasons I'm glad I'm here. It's a great environment, and there are a lot of good players on this field. D'Angelo Hall back on the field. He's one of the great players. He's at the bottom of your screen now, and Randall looked in his direction for a moment, then through to the other side for a first down. Ernest Wilford, their leading receiver for the season, almost cost himself the first down as he curled back near the marker. But they mark him down at the 49 of West Virginia and a first down. Craig, I, I'd say this was pretty perfect. He looked left, looked right, then comes back to his third option on this one to make the play. That's and, a pretty good quarterback. And Wilford had the time to get over there and get set. There was two receivers and three men around him. Blue jerseys have to go attract and find the white jerseys. And a lot of time for Randall to throw the ball. Virginia Tech averaging 45 points per game. They're the highest scoring team in the conference. Movement before the snap. Almost looked like the center forgot the snap count. He held onto it so Fire long with everybody snap. else moving around him. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Dunn and Keith Willis on the right end of the line. Those guilty of the early movement for Coach Beamer. I, I really think they're having trouble hearing down there. I think the crowd, the emotion early in the ball game. Virginia Tech is struggling with that. They have not been on the road very often. Five out of their six games were home. The other one might as well have been a home game. It was at Rutgers. High formation on first and 15. The Hokies back at their own 46. And the toss to Jones in trouble. He shed one tackle, but still out of bounds for a loss. And there is a flag down on the play. They mark Jones out at the 45 for a loss of one. Scott Jerko up from his linebacker position. He's a former walk-on holding the call against Virginia Tech. Jerko grew up right here in Morgantown, dreamed of playing for the Mountaineers coming out of high school. His only Division I offer was at Virginia Military. He had a number of Division II and one AA offers. His parents had Take the MI, take the money, <laughs> take the scholarship. 
<laughs> he said, no, I'm going to walk on, and now he is on scholarship, playing at a much higher level. Holding, gets the offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Well, you mentioned Jerko walking on here. The first time he walked into this stadium, he was two years old and couldn't get it out of his blood. He wanted to be a part of the blue and gold here. I think it's remarkable the success they've had in this program over the years when you consider on a good year in this state, they will have five or six prospects, high school football players who go on to play Division I football. There are only about 1.8 million people in the entire state of West Virginia. Gives you an idea of what a remarkable job Don Nealon did for the two decades he was the head coach here. Here's Jones with some running room outside. Now he's chopped down at the 46. They need to get to the 39 of West Virginia for a first down. Brian King and Lance Frazier combining on the stop of Jones, a gain of 10. You know, you get a feel here in, this, in the game early on that both teams kind of feeling themselves out. And I think defensively, West Virginia is figuring out if you don't tackle Jones low, you're not going to tackle him. I think you're right. And he can set you up. I mean, he had a little hesitation move on that last run. You're going to have a hard time figuring out where to hit him because he has a lot of stuff he can pull at you. Four wide receivers spread the formation on second down and 15. Nearly five minutes played. Here comes a blitz. Randall got away and then dumped it off. Two Jones with running room and very close to a first down at the 40-yard line of the Mountaineers. He's a little slow to get up, as is Pac-Man Jones, who was in on the tackle for Rand West Virginia. Randall has to make plays on the road. This is one of the things we said was going to be important to them. I'm impressed with the pressure they're putting on him at times, but his ability, you see, he, didn't, he just didn't run, did he? No, no, he, he was looking to throw that ball. Hey, nice job. Third down and one. Kevin Jones, the lone back. And a timeout called by Charge Virginia timeout. Tech. Virginia Tech. West Virginia has not had the ball yet. Still scoreless in Morgantown. Out of the timeout called by Virginia Tech. The Hokies with third down and one at the 40-yard line of West Virginia on the opening drive of the game. Three tight ends on the field. One of them, Jeff King, went in motion. Jones threw a big hole on the right. And he's down at the 27-yard line with a 13-yard gain and a first down. Pretty methodical, and they're just gashing them right now. This comes off the right side, Craig. Watch the good block, and they're just driving them inside. Jones has his choice of a couple of holes, goes outside, and I don't know if this 3-3-5 defense can stack up in short yardage situations. Well, they're going to have to fill lanes and be a lot more responsible with their assignments, and they're going to have to get low on Jones. Jones impressive with the power that he's showing right now. Drive more than six minutes long now for the Hokies, primarily on the ground. And it's Jones across the 25, and that's all. The Hokies are averaging 249 yards per game on the ground. That's fourth in the nation. But we've talked about their schedule. They really haven't faced the iron of yeah. Division I a college football. So no, and West Virginia has. West Virginia's had to play Wisconsin. They've had some tough opponents out there, Miami. And so when, when you talk about that, that just gets them battle tested. I, I think you're right about that. And we're going to find out tonight. Angelo Hall on the field again at the bottom of the screen. Randall looks in his direction, throws in his direction, intercepted! Brian King, who had the game-clinching interception at Blacksburg last year, haunts Brian Randall again. Last year, he said he baited Randall into the throw, and it looked like he did again this time with Hall. Yeah, look at Hall. What happens there? There's the void. Here's your void. The play is late. The, the ball is late getting there. Randall's got to come up and throw that football. He's late. He's absolutely late. And King did nothing but read his eyes and wait and come over. Baited him again. He baited him to throw that ball. That's a good job. How about King? How do you keep catching balls when you got a bad wrist like he has? He's had wrist problems throughout his career. He's had 
pins in the wrist. The wrist passed it. And yet the senior was able to hang on for the interception. West Virginia on offense for the first time tonight. Quincy Wilson took a hit from his own teammate and bounced ahead for one yard, tackled by Coles Colas, the defensive end. A no huddle offense is West Virginia. It's not always a hurry up, but they're up to the line pretty quickly here. Rashid Marshall, the quarterback. Going deep, there was contact and a flag thrown. He was looking for Chris Henry, who collided with D'Angelo Hall, and the flag thrown at the 31-yard line. I think D'Angelo Hall was shocked because nobody really challenges at him, and they go after him on the second play of the game offensively. And, and Henry's a big target, a big receiver. You see the slip there with D'Angelo Hall? You know, maybe a little tardy with his footwork. It's slippery. We were the three of us were on the field before the game. It Rain rained here defense. earlier. Catch the defense. Catch the defense. Maybe a spot. First down. And, and, and that water on that field is still down there. It's slippery. There it wasn't with that contact. That might have been a touchdown. Yeah. Because it looked like Henry was going to run right by him, and there was no safety help. You're looking at Rashid Marshall, the junior from Pittsburgh, only about an hour and change up the road from Morgantown. They've had trouble throwing the ball this year. They'd like to be balanced, but they've been predominantly a running team. They've run more than twice as many running plays this season as they have pass plays. They work out of the spread offense. And the handoff to Quincy Wilson. That looked a lot like that run on the screen pass against Miami. There's Wilson again just lowering his head and running over Brandon Manning. Chris Henry, McQuell Henderson, and Sean Bolden, the three wide outs in the spread, and Josh Bailey, the tight end. The offensive line has been a problem. They lost their best lineman before the season started, Tim Brown. They've used ten different combinations up front. And you saw tonight's group with Watson, the junior college transfer, now in a tackle. That Quincy Wilson, he's, he's, he's all man back there, there. There was some wood delivered right then. Jeremy Hines, also a new starter at center tonight. Ben Timmons out with an injury. Wilson running the other way. Flag down. Wilson down near the 30. Well, there might have been a hold against West Virginia on the corner. And the Virginia Tech defense, an outstanding front four, including the brothers Lewis, Kevin, the older brother. Want to go back, right? Bakey and Robinson, the linebacker core. Hall, Williams, Crawford, and Green in the secondary. They're playing without Darnell Wilds, who injured a knee during the 10-day break between games. There's Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator. He's been on the staff since the late 80s has been the coordinator for nine years now. Yeah, I think he's been around about 17 years. He's an institution at uh, Virginia Tech. Out of the shotgun with K.J. Harris and Pinsey Wilson. Next to Marshall. A lot of players just stopped. There are flags with no whistles, and the pass is completed to Travis Garvin at the 30-yard line. The That's entire offensive line just stayed over the ball. <laughs> but the pass was completed for Literally. a 14-yard gain. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like that before. No. I mean, they stayed over there until the ball was blown dead. Yeah, they in their all stance. in their stances. Yeah, like they didn't realize like, hey, the ball I'm had been not snapped. getting caught for moving. Yeah. Don't, don't even Outside. think about it. Defense. Penalties decline. Second. Third down. That's that is that's pretty impressive there. This is an offensive line. You know their yeah. offensive line coach. They they don't want to get penciled yeah, out. Don't, don't watch the ball. Just look. The line never moves. <laughs> <laughs> they never move. And Maybe what a heads up part by Marshall too, huh? <laughs> uh, good alertness by the rest of them. West Virginia with movement again. Again, the offensive line stays in place, and this pass is incomplete. <laughs> On third and six, it might become third and one. Chris Henry, the intended receiver, the throw too high. What is going on here? That's a good question, Frank. <laughs> Once again, after the movement Outside. by Virginia Tech, defense. the West Virginia offensive Five line never came up out of their stances. Obviously, the defensive line's listening right now to the bark. I mean, you, you'll see it here. They don't move. This group here, offensive line, they're just going to say, stay put. Well, it looked like the center, <laughs> you know, snapped at the moment he saw movement. 
Five penalties for 40 yards. They average 43 yards per game in penalties. For a little more than midway through the quarter, Virginia Tech almost to a per game average. Rashid Marshall keeps on third and one and has the first down. All right, Craig, let's go back to this, this spread offense for a moment, what they do here at West Virginia. You know, Rich Rodriguez had this thing at Tulane, and then he had it at Clemson, and they spread people out and they throw the ball. They don't really throw it anymore. They just kind of pound people now. And, that, and he says that's a misconception that you have. You go no huddle, and you're just trying to give the ability for yourself to go fast tempo if you want to, but they will run the football. Quincy Wilson, well, you mentioned it goes back to his stints as an offensive coordinator at Tulane Clemson. It actually goes back to his days as a head coach in NAIA. Rich Rodriguez played here at West Virginia, was the defensive back for Don Nealon, got a head coaching job at age 24. He was coaching at Salem College, was an assistant. The head coach left. They made him the head coach. He was all excited. They went out and played one season, had a good year, and had just about everybody coming back. Marshall dumps it off near side. And close to another first down, they do have it as Josh Bailey goes out of bounds. That is the first reception by a tight end or fullback for West Virginia this year. They don't throw to the tight ends and fullbacks very often. Go back to your story. I want to hear more. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez, we have a good year. Now I'm 25. I've got a team that's rolling, Salem College. He gets a call one day to uh, come in and meet with the athletic director. There'll be news that's not going to be good to the program. The news was they were dropping the program. A university in Japan had purchased the college and was dropping a number of sports, including football. So Rich came back here as a volunteer assistant under Don Nealon and made money by teaching driver's ed at a high school about an hour away. Until about 1 o'clock. <laughs> yes, and yeah. he come here. Well, and then he went back into uh, NAIA coaching at Glenville State, where he had a great run for seven years, and then went on to join Tommy Bowden at Tulane. But he has had an interesting career path, to say the least. On second and long, a good throw by Marshall, escaping is Chris Henry. First down, West Virginia to the 38-yard line of the Hokies. A gain of 12. Henry's their leading receiver for the year, and he has just 11 catches coming in. They haven't had much success through the year. Look at Henry. He comes back. He works to the inside. D'Angelo Hall's not seeing the game. He's not matching up. You know, I think D'Angelo Hall has just gotten accustomed to the fact that people ignore him. He's such a he's great lazy corner. right now. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. He's a great corner. He hasn't been tested most of, most of the season. And now they're going after him early in the ballgame. He didn't expect that. Three receivers and the lone back. Wilson with a lot of running room. Flag down. Probably for a hold at about the 20-yard line. Wilson goes down near the three-yard line. But it looked like there was a hold at about the 20 to 22 yard line. And it was Chris Henry, it appeared, the wide receiver. And he's getting an earful now from Rich Rodriguez. And, and he didn't have to do it. He did not have to do it. Quincy Wilson was into the secondary. And given the way he runs, Craig, there was a pretty good chance. The offense. Then you have penalty. Spot of the foul. Still first down. Now, that what was that? interesting. D'Angelo Hall going over and chatting with Rich Rodriguez. Wonder there been some talk back and forth between the sideline and Hall. Now watch him get into the open here. Yeah, I'm not so sure. You're, you're right about that because he's, with his power, he's, he's going to one arm it, stiff arm it, run him over something. But they are definitely going at D'Angelo Hall. And how about the eyes and the vision and the patience of Wilson in the backfield? He let him over pursue, which is an aggressive defense right now, and he cut back from the spot of the foul, so it's first down and four for West Virginia at the 32-yard line. Four and a half left in the opening quarter. No score. Each team has moved the ball on its first drive. K.J. Harris, the back up to Wilson. He delivered a stiff arm to Eric Green, and another flag thrown downfield. Harris out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Wow. And K.J. Harris, he's a load coming through there. He's about 240 pounds, a little different from Quincy Wilson, but he can run. He's got good speed, too. And this flag, as you could hear from the roar, is against Virginia Tech. Personal foul, face pass, against the defense, half the distance to the goal line, first down. 
They say 240 pounds, but we had lunch with him yesterday and a couple of these teammates, and uh, I think after he left lunch, he went to about 243. <laughs> you gained a couple, too. Hey, friend. I, I tell you what, he got, he got a little face mask of uh, Eric Green on that play, too, and stiff arm. He ate a bunch of uh, fried shrimp. I know that. <laughs> he might have been 240 your... when they weighed <laughs> yeah. in at the beginning of the up. year. First and goal, West Virginia. Harris bounces outside. Touchdown! Excellent block on the corner by the tight end, Ryan Thomas. Help Harris go around the corner untouched. This was a football team who came in here ready to play tonight. And I'm talking about West Virginia. They've been through it. I mean, there's just something right to say about being battle-tested. Well, and you know something? They overcame penalties on that drive as well. A long drive. That's pretty impressive. A 10-play drive. They were helped by Virginia Tech penalties. Brad Cooper adds the extra point. K.J. Harris, the junior from Tampa. Former minor league baseball player in the Texas Rangers organization. It's a home run. It's seven to nothing. KJ Harris, the touchdown, capping a 90-yard drive for this West Virginia offense that has struggled through much of the year. They're at or near the bottom in many offensive categories in the Big East. KJ Harris capped the drive with a seven-yard run. Brad Cooper to kick off to Mike Emo and Cedric Humes. Rich Rodriguez talked about the importance of a good start. You have a raucous crowd that wants to get behind this team. They have reason to believe right now that was an impressive drive by WVU. And a good kick by Cooper. Humes takes it in. Brian Randall and the Hokies offense coming back on the field. They'll have the ball for the second time when we come back. West Virginia trying to hand number three Virginia Tech its first loss of the season the Hokies roll into Morgantown at 6-0 moved the ball effectively on their first drive before Brian Randall threw an interception Randall leading the option nice cut and he's tripped up right along the first down line at the 30 tripped up by Leandre Washington. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch the right side. You saw the defensive line crash down inside uh, Craig and that lets him get outside. And Hall number four has got to fill that hole. He's kind of sat there and waited on him. He's got to get up in there. He allowed the bounce to take place. The defensive ends for Virginia Tech really like to crash down inside. So West Virginia will bounce things outside, especially Harris. It is a first down for Randall and Virginia Tech. Play action fake and a completion to Justin Hamilton. The sophomore out to the 44-yard line. A 14-yard gain. Let's head down toward the sideline and welcome in Sam Ryan. Hi, Sam. Hey, Sean. You guys have been mentioning hostile environment. Well, Morgantown police have taken measures trying to prevent any type of post-game disturbances here in Morgantown, which is quite familiar with street fires. There have been more than 900 since 1997. So earlier in the week, they went around rounding up any type of bonfire type materials such as couches, which you can see are quite popular this time of year. They've also added extra officers in the stands. Keep in mind, they played in Blacksburg last year. Goalposts came down here, guys. That's right. After the game, which was in Blacksburg, students ran into this stadium, ripped down the goalpost. They set couches on fire all over Morgantown. That is unfortunately a tradition yeah, that's the here way they, at West Virginia University. The they, they light bonfires and well, all week long, the fire chief and his people have been confiscating couches left on porches. How, how do you get a uh, tradition of burning couches? Or, or, and on a cold day like this, why do you have your couch on the front porch? <laughs> you know, why are you outside on a, on a couch? Couches for the living room. This is a spirited rivalry. They're about five hours apart, these two universities. Bad pitch by Randall. It's on the ground and smothered for a moment by Richard Johnson. Then he lost it. And Mike Lorello has it for West Virginia. Second turnover for Virginia Tech, and Randall's been involved in both of them. 
Watch the pressure from the inside out. Watch the attack on the quarterback, forcing the pitch. Beautiful job of making the pitch occur, and Jones took his eyes off of it. Yeah, that ball was a little bit behind him, but you know, you're right. You've got to be focused on the ball. It was a bad pitch because it happened very fast, like you said. Kevin McClee, 43, came up, smoked Randall, forced the pitch, and you've got to be prepared as a pitch back for the early chunk. Johnson had it for a moment, but couldn't hang on to it. Lorello came up with it. First and 10 from the Virginia Tech 36. They want to strike quickly. Marshall down the seam. Is that a catch? Yes, it is. And an acrobatic one by Torrey Johnson. We mentioned their tight ends didn't have a catch the whole year. Now they have two. Oh, boy. They had their choices on the play action down the middle to Johnson. They also had a wide open receiver on the right side. And Johnson, look wow. at that effort. That's uh, Kellen Winslow S. That's the catch that hurt them in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know, you talk about an over aggressive defense at Virginia Tech, and Rasheed Marshall showing a lot of vision and Marshall poise now. right now. West Virginia. They've had difficulty throwing the football out. this year. And he's completed under 50% of his passes. There was some confusion with the signals, apparently. And that's the reason why West Virginia used a timeout. Sure, they didn't want to use the timeout there. They had everything going in their favor. Rodriguez, you know, I enjoyed him. We meet coaches every week. And, and his enthusiasm, his obvious passion for his alma mater, and, and that tempo, that up-tempo offense, them going to the line of scrimmage, and, and, and it's, I think it's working right now. I think you're absolutely right. It is working. I think Virginia Tech is a little bit off their game. They're surprised by what they're seeing, the tight ends, the bounce outside, and I think the crowd. All those those three things, I think, have hurt them so far. Sean, I just think the last thing West Virginia wanted was a timeout when they had the crowd rocking and they were moving and everything working in their favor in a Virginia Tech team that is a little bit rattled right now. I believe that before this game started, Virginia Tech thought they were going to pound West Virginia. I don't think there was any risk of them looking past this game. At least they said all the right things when we talked with the players and coaches. They lost to this West Virginia team last year at home. They saw West Virginia come within an eyelash of beating Miami. There's Wilson inside the five. They'll mark him down at the five-yard line. First and goal, West Virginia looking to go up by two touchdowns. It's just a trap play inside. Here you see the lineman pulling around and then good block by Johnson. Huge hole inside. That's what you do to a fast defense. Once again, crashing down from the ends. Again, that time Cole, Cole is crashing down. They've got him inside in the trap. And a good block by the pulling Jeff Burke. Down to the goal line. Touchdown, Quincy Wilson. be worried if I owned a couch in this town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Cooper on to try the extra point. They needed just three plays after the fumble to go to 36 yards. Wilson, the five-yard touchdown run. Two minutes left in the first quarter. West Virginia leads 14 to nothing. Let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, Sean, Trevor Albertson, Mark May with me. Not only couches, as they have probably day beds and sleeper sofas, too. I was talking to Jim Donovan about this game today, and he said he didn't know if Virginia Tech could stop the run because they're a little soft in the middle on defense. That's what we're seeing so far. Well, he's absolutely right. In this game, what they've been able to do is the offensive line's established control and domination. They're moving the defender to Virginia Tech back away from the line of scrimmage. But for me, Trev, I want to find out if West Virginia can continue to do this for four quarters. Remember, against Miami, they had the lead and lost it. I talked to Bud Foster last night the defensive coordinator of Virginia Tech, and he told me, looks like you said, the whole key of the game was his defensive tackles. Were they strong enough in the middle? They said Quincy Wilson's as good a running back as we'll see all year long. I think he was that good. And as the guys mentioned, too, and you got the impression from Coach Foster, no way they were looking Absolutely past West not. Virginia to head to Miami. No. They knew what they were in for, and boy, they are getting it so far, guys. Well, you're absolutely right. They are getting it, and 
You heard the guys talk about the tackles. The other thing with Virginia Tech defensively, and for West Virginia planned for it, when those ends crash down, Craig, they look to bounce everything outside. It reminds me of watching a Mark May game where he's just pulverizing <laughs> a Trev Alberts in the hole right now. Cooper's kickoff into the end zone to Cedric Humes. And he's tackled shy of the 20-yard line by this fired-up West Virginia coverage team. That's James Woodruff, a backup defensive back. You know, you're going to see the tailback score. Watch the fullback. Watch the fullback lead in there on 45 in the middle. There's just a lot of receiving by the defense right now. One other thing. We were told yesterday by K.J. Harris, Virginia Tech's defensive players, too many arm tackles. They're going to run right through them, and we've seen them run hard. And a pause before the Please snap. turn off the sound amplification system. They're playing some noise over the PA system while West Virginia's, or rather, while Virginia Tech is in the huddle. So the crowd says, okay, we'll make the noise. <laughs> That's all they oh, needed. That worked. <laughs> I couldn't even hear it while I go. <laughs> On the 17, first and 10. Jones, nifty footwork. And pulled down short of the first down to the 25-yard line by Kevin McClee, backup linebacker, nicknamed Boo. We spoke with Jeff Castile yesterday, the defensive coordinator. He said, McClee has a lot of talent, but sometimes he plays our defense, and sometimes he plays the defense he played in high school. <laughs> well, we're liking to play their defense exclusively. That's what happens with freshmen sometimes, you know? Takes a while to get it out of your system. Well, you have to forget that part first, and then put into practice what you're learning here in West Virginia. Gain of eight for Jones. They'll try the right side. Good penetration and a loss. They're flying up from the secondary. Brian King made the tackle. He had plenty of help. Well, they want to make Jones bounce everything in the backfield. And you'll see them bring run blitzes inside, get penetration to make him bounce it outside. And they want the ball to flow out to their safeties to make tackles outside the hash mark. That's, a, that's the idea behind this defensive game plan against Virginia Tech's offense. On this particular series, Virginia Tech has not panicked. They've gone too tight. They tried to run the ball to get back in the game. D'Angelo Hall back on the field on offense. Late clock down to four as Randall Watt breaks out of the gun. Surveying the entire field. Has to get rid of it. He did not go down. Managed to stay on his feet. And now he's down short of a first down. Matter of fact, the loss of two on the play. Ben Lynch, the nose guard, junior from Oil City, Pennsylvania, with help from his fellow Oil City native, Adam Lenort on the play and the good decision here was not to do anything if you make a play now you take a chance to make a bad play you could be down by 21 points but he took the ball away and did not commit a turnover down there that's a pretty good job i think in that situation for randall and a big play by lynch we visited with him yesterday he said i played horribly in the last game against rutgers not so so far tonight a dream in the first quarter for West Virginia fans. Their Mountaineers lead 14 to nothing. Tom McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Craig James, and Sam Ryan. West Virginia leading 14 to nothing. And Virginia Tech about to punt. They turned it over in their first two possessions. And now here's Vinnie Burns, the junior from New Orleans, averaging 42 yards per punt. Had a great game against Syracuse in their last game, average 47 per kick. This is not a great punt that goes out of bounds with no chance for a return by Pac-Man Jones. Well, fellas, 
It was hard to know what to expect tonight. Virginia Tech certainly looks like an enormously talented team, but hadn't really been tested yet by the schedule. West Virginia looked great against Miami, lost to Cincinnati. How do you figure? Well, we know one thing. We know that West Virginia can run the football. There might have been a question beforehand, but they're doing it against a pretty good defense right now. How about Rashid Marshall, the quarterback, four for four? He's throwing the football. He's not making mistakes. He's making good decisions. And I think, in my opinion, the speed of the defense at West Virginia has, has shocked me and Virginia Tech. The only two wins for West Virginia have been against East Carolina, a team that got its first win last weekend, and Rutgers. Here's a pass up in the air, broken up. Intended for K.J. Harris and Brandon Manning. The linebacker broke it up. We check our ESPN game track. Well, you talk about the first quarter. Virginia Tech turnovers. A pick by King got things going. And then the bad pitch on the fumble, Kevin Jones, loses that when they get it back. And it was all the running game. Yeah, it was the running game. And how about the offensive line? There's no penetration whatsoever in this game by Virginia Tech. And, and I think that's given the ability for the cutbacks and the bounces. Two tight ends in the game now for West Virginia on second and ten. Quincy Wilson, the lone back. He gets the call, had a nice hole. And good line surge as well. Finally, Mikel Bakey made the tackle on Wilson, but not before he picked up six to the 41-yard line. Somehow, Virginia Tech has to just kind of, you know, catch a breath. It's almost like, let's regroup, fellas. We're on the road. We are now facing a team that has a lot of speed. I, I think you're right, and I think it would also help if you know, D'Angelo Hall got involved a little bit more. I think you're right. Slow start for him, but if he picks it up, I think that'll help their defense. Oh. Timeout called by Rasheed Start's Marshall, the second used by West, West Virginia. Virginia. First minute of the second quarter, Frank Beamer and the Hokies trailing 14 to nothing. At their own 41 yard line, leading Virginia Tech 14 to nothing. Rasheed Marshall out of the shotgun, the option, the pitch, the first down and more. Quincy Wilson to the 48-yard line of the Hokies. And they caught them in a soft coverage, so they really had no support out there. You'll see them coming up. Now watch. Look how far back all the coverage is out there. The support is way off, and so the pitch was the perfect call against the perfect cover. That's what the, that's what going to the line of scrimmage, looking at what the defense has. If the play works, you stick with it. If it doesn't, you get out of it. 11-yard gain for Wilson. He is 56 yards rushing. Here's his backup, K.J. Harris. Chopped down a nice open field play by Brandon Manning, the junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, who's been pressed for playing time now with the outside linebacker position by Aaron Rouse, a freshman who is coming on quickly. They have talent in both of those gentlemen. West Virginia is averaging about eight yards per play in this football game, which means they're not in those second long and third and long situations. Rich Rodriguez acts as his own offensive coordinator. He calls the plays. A.J. Harris again, found a hole, squirted through, first down. Oh my goodness. They are just gashing them, Craig. And, and, you know, let's just look. And when you see what's happening here, the guards, look at all the work that they have. There's, I mean, there's absolutely no problem with the slide through, the slither effect. Everybody's matching up, and there's no penetration, no push by Virginia Tech. A hat on a hat. An offensive line that has struggled with injuries all season long. It's really been the weakness of this football team. And a timeout called by Virginia Tech. Bud Foster not accustomed to seeing this from his talented defensive unit. Each team with one timeout remaining in the half, still 13.04 left. The Mountaineers, after a nine-win season last year, have struggled to a two-and-four mark this year. But they have controlled this football game through the first 17 minutes, leading 14 and nothing on first and 10. Quincy Wilson inside the 30 to the 29. And gentlemen, this is an offense that had really been struggling last in the Big East in total yards and passing yards, seventh in the conference in scoring. But they have been a good rushing team. Last year, they were second in the nation in rushing offense. Of course, you alluded to the problem that they've had early on, just the mixtures of offensive lines. They've had so many combinations. 
They've rushed for 102 yards already. The line again, many of them did not move. The throw out of bounds by Rasheed Marshall looking for D. Alston. Well, the question with this offense has really been Marshall's ability to throw the ball, to get it down the field. That's been frustrating. My question, fellas, is what's going on with this offensive line? That time, three offensive linemen again never came out they of their They thought sneeze. that they, had, they were off sides. Yeah. They snapped it early, and they just they, you know, did their usual Statue of yeah. Liberty. It's the same no thing flag. they did in the first quarter. You know, They think they catch a guy, the offensive line won't move, and the skilled players go ahead and run the play. I exactly. think once they start running around, though, everybody else starts running. You're kind of free to come out of your stance, aren't you? <laughs> you made your point. We didn't move. Third down and six. They try to ground with Quincy Wilson, and the Hokies are not fooled. Coles Colas, the left end, making his 18th career start tonight. How about his numbers at his size, guys? He runs a 4 4 one Bench press is 420 pounds at 241. All right, that's pretty good. And, and you know what? Here, here on fourth down, I'd go for it because about the only way that, or one way and a significant way that Virginia Tech could get back in the game is blocking the kick or returning it. Well, they're going to try and gain field position here and punt this ball. They're, they're out of a very deep shotgun, which makes me think it's a quick kick. And a little bit of a shank. Craig, I know you're familiar with those. <laughs> I had and a few of those. All rolls down to the 19-yard line. Hey, it worked. <laughs> a 16-yard punt. College football Thursday. That's tomorrow, folks. Maryland and Georgia Tech in an ACC battle. That gets underway at 7:30. Of course, Maryland quarterback by a former Mountaineer, Scott McBrien. The Turks really put it on this West Virginia team earlier this season, 34 to 7. Maryland's won five in a row since starting with losses to Northern Illinois and Florida State. That should be an excellent game tomorrow night at 7:30. Jones forced to bounce outside. Good pursuit from the speedy West Virginia defense. And it's Brian King, bad wrist and all, making the play. Of course, the wrist generally doesn't affect your running, Sam. That's right, Sean. Well, it's been broken, sprained, jammed, and operated on, and right now he's wearing a cast for protection, although nothing is broken right now. His doctors told him the damage has already been done and that his wrist appears to have arthritis and scar tissue of a 65-year-old man. He said it hurts him sometimes even to brush his teeth or talk on the phone. Doctors have suggested fusing the bones together in his wrist, which means no more movement but no pain he is considering that Sean no that doesn't sound like fun Cedric Humes the backup tailback in now to give Jones a breather and here's Humes sophomore from Virginia Beach tackled by Fred Bluford very near a first down to the 28 yard line Sean going back to the wrist injury for King he's had a wrist problem for so long that he's become accustomed to playing you see the cast there so even though it's painful, he's learned how to tackle with it. He's learned how to intercept the ball with it. It's something that's going to be a problem for him after football. That's just an example for you, Craig, of the price you pay sometimes for playing this game. I think it's just an excuse they didn't have to brush his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> What's your excuse? Hey, there's three, there's three, there's an extra guy and an extra guy on the outside. That's what West Virginia's doing to keep an eight around the box. Randall throws, and it is caught by Justin Hamilton. On first and 10, they get 10 more. It seems they have another first down out of the 38. Adam Jones made the tackle. And, and here's what I'm talking about. There's the 3-3, three, three, and then they've got an extra guy up here in the court. They're tied around the box. See, they've got eight, and it's not just the six. Right, and the idea is really on running plays to flush things to the outside and let those fast five defensive backs you know, run things down and make tackles for short games. People might be asking why Rich Rodriguez said when he got here they didn't have many defensive lineman types. They had a lot of good linebackers and secondary players. So go to this alignment and get your best athletes on the field. Move it before the snap. Looks like the tight end moved. Well, Sean, and the other thing is that you can recruit those Fire guys. Fire to the snap. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's easier to recruit the guys to play linebacker than defensive linemen. Virginia Tech and West Virginia, great rivalry. It dates back to 1912. Tech has won 10 of the last 14. 
But tonight, Tech about a two touchdown favorite. Coming in here at six and all, trailing 14 to nothing. Frank Beamer was worried about this. He said it reminded him a lot of 1999 when Tech came here undefeated with Michael Vick at quarterback and needed a field goal on the last play of the game to remain undefeated. They went to the Sugar Bowl that year and played Florida State in the national championship game. Cedric Humes, the ball carrier, out to the 43, a gain of 10. They got the penalty yardage back in five more. That's an example of how patient Virginia Tech will be on offense. A first and 15, they'll run the ball. I and mean, they will run that ball until they are clearly in a third down passing situation because they believe in their offensive line so much. Yeah, and, and, but you saw Beamer rolling his hand around like, we got to pick the tempo up a little bit. we got to get in and out of this huddle. We talked about how Randall had been perfect this season. He has not been perfect tonight. A couple of costly turnovers have led to two scores. He's on target with that throw to their best receiver, Ernest Wilford, who has another first down to the West Virginia 49. Lance Frazier had the coverage. It's a gain of eight. Well, Randall has been so good this year that he's kept Marcus Vick on the sideline. I think everybody thought coming into the season that Marcus Vick, the younger brother of Michael Vick, would probably find his way onto the field. But this guy's been so good, Marcus Vick hasn't been able to get out there. And there you see him. He doesn't have a helmet on. There, he, he's, he's like... Real backup now, extreme backup. We had a competition in the spring. Marcus Vick, of course, the younger brother of Michael Vick. Flag thrown, Randall spinning and finally down on the carpet for a loss back to the 48. The flag was thrown right in the middle of the offensive line. Grant Wiley made the tackle on Randall, and it's a holding call against the Hokies, a team that came in least penalized in the Big East penalized eight times already in less than a quarter and a half. Holding. Gets the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Eight penalties for 62 yards against Coach Beamer and the Hokies. This crowd is just going to go nuts if West Virginia gets a stop here and gets the ball back. I have not been in an environment before, Sean, where public schools were closing down on the day of a game and you've got university professors canceling classes to allow students to get out and enjoy this thing. It's been unique. There are major traffic concerns in the city of Morgan Town. It's not the easiest place to get in and out of. The stadium is right next to the Morris Hospital. They share parking lots. From the 41-yard line, Randall in the flat, pass interference. Wilford had Lance Frazier on his back. Really an unnecessary play by Frazier. He was in excellent position to just tackle Wilford immediately for a very short game. Pass interference. Gets the defense. Spot foul. Automatic interesting first situation down. where they'll actually bring the chains back. And because Wilford didn't come back to the ball, it really is why Frazier went through him to get to the football. Well, it's even worse than that. Frazier did not believe what he saw. Frazier was sitting out there waiting for the play, and when the ball started to come, he hesitated. He couldn't believe that Randall was throwing the ball out there when he was sitting right there. And that hesitation cost him an interception and got him a pass interference penalty. That's a good matchup. Frazier, a three-year starter on Wilford. He was an NFL prospect at wide receiver. On first and ten for the 45, Randall going deep, and it is caught by Wilford. Down at the 21-yard line of West Virginia. Uh, this is really an option for Randall as he looks out there. He has his choice of an out. And a post corner. You'll see this here, and then the inside right up there. And he's going to force the safety to make a choice as to where he's going to go. And watch him flow this way. Now, he's got a choice of coming out or going down the middle. He goes to his tall receiver down the middle. Brian King, number 11, the free safety, bit on the play action. He just sat there too long and didn't, didn't maintain his responsibility deep. 34-yard gain. Justin Hamilton in motion. Kevin Jones alone back. Randall throwing toward Hamilton. Incomplete. Over his head. 
Lance Frazier running in coverage. Not a lot of pursuit there by the blue jerseys. Nobody's really rushing. They had three that they were trying to rush, and they just dropped eight, and that was way too much time. Well, I'll tell you what Virginia Tech ought to be thinking about right now is your speed option. I mean, last year around this area of the field, they ran that speed option, and it really paid off for them. They have not shown it much tonight, but when they go to it, and they don't go to it usually out of this set, but when they're in shotgun and they go to it, they have a chance to get something done down here. Two tight ends on the field now for Virginia Tech. Second and ten Hokies. From the West Virginia 21. Quarterback draw. Randall. Lost the football. It's three at the 20. Randall has already turned it over twice. Mike Lorello, who recovered the errant pitch earlier, seemed to pull that ball out from Randall. You can see that Brian doesn't have it because he's back on his feet. And no indication yet from the officials. Finally, the line judge said Virginia Tech ball at the 20-yard line. Well, we've, we've heard an awful lot recently about what goes on in piles on a field. Ruling on the field. There is no fumble. His progress was stuck. Ooh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> That's one way to avoid that. Look at the pursuit the coming off the corner hard. That's the pursuit that's making plays right now. Mike Morello coming off around the corner. I, ooh, yeah. wow. What do you think, Coach? Hey, I, I think his progress was stopped. Well, if that's the case, how come the officials didn't signal with their arms over they their head have. right away yeah. and just gesture immediately that it was Virginia Tech ball? None of them signaled that through the entire time they were all piled up. You're dressed like a banker thinking like a lawyer. <laughs> Out of the shotgun on third down. Randall tripped up from behind. He did not know that the rusher was there. Leandre Washington, the senior from Key West, Florida. Former linebacker, now a strong safety. But they move him all over the field. He was up there on the blitz and made the play. It's the outside pressure. That right now has just thrown a loop to the Virginia Tech offense. Why didn't he move it? I don't know, but he didn't see the overload coming from the back side. And they love to do that. They brought four from the right side. Carter Warley, the field goal kicker, has made seven of his last eight. It's a 40-yard try. Robert Peasley, the holder. Warley's had a bit of a bad back lately. He hooked that one. No good, wide to the left. The frustration continues for the Hokies here in Morgantown. Not much has gone right for Virginia Tech so far, but a long way to go in this one. More than six minutes left in the first half. West Virginia with the ball in a 14 to nothing lead. The Mountaineers begin at their own 23. Quincy Wilson, a powerful runner. He's out to the 29-yard line. I tell you, Quincy Wilson runs hard. He delivers the blow, but he's not the only guy. K.J. Harris has been running for arm tackles as well. They've got the whole package going. They've got their own Pony Express going right now, Craig. And let me tell you what's got it going on is that offensive line at West Virginia, but the backs have definitely sent a message that they're going to run you over during the way. Here's a deep ball, and it is incomplete. Intended for Chris Henry. Eric Green had the coverage. And, and, you know, this is just showing you again right now that West Virginia is not going to sit back. They're running the football, which has really brought up Virginia Tech's defense. Rasheed Marshall, he's going to throw the football. Yeah, he's taking his shot. They will normally try at least one deep ball a quarter. We've seen one already, but they'll probably come back. They haven't really gone after Green very much. They've gone after Hall. Well, he might have gotten away with a little bit of a push-off there as yep. he tried to shed Eric Green. Marshall out of the gun. On third down and four. He pulls it down and runs and has a first down. Then he got belted. 
But the forward progress to the 34, Eric Green said hello at the 34-yard line, a gain of six. Green can't feel his arm right now. Yeah. That's one of them stingers in the neck where he comes out. Hey, again, look at the presence of Mina Marshall. He doesn't get flustered, get the first down. Oh. In their Stinger. last game against Rutgers, and Green still a little sore. Rashid Marshall went over 1,000 career yards in rushing. Only Major Harris in the 1,000-yard rushing club among West Virginia quarterbacks all time. Hank, uh, we've all been there, Craig. You come up and hit somebody or you're running the ball, you get hit, and immediately you feel that pain shoot down your arm and you kind of go numb momentarily. Yeah, so right now that property management major, he needs to he needs to properly manage that shoulder blade area. <laughs> he needs to go get a couple of aspirin. <laughs> hey, Doc! I'm hurting. We are a little bit more thin than usual in the secondary two. Green starting tonight because Garnell Wilds is out with a knee injury. Right up the middle. Wilson, the ball carrier. It appeared the ball came out, but he was whistled down by contact. At the 38. A gain of four for Wilson. How did you do, Craig? I think you played against his dad in the Super Bowl, did you not? Yeah, I did. And, I, and, and about about the only thing, all I remember is, is them running past me, sacking the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> no blitz pickup? <laughs> no. Dad, Otis Wilson, the former Chicago Bear, played against Craig's Patriots in the Super Bowl in 86, correct? Brandon Manning made the tackle on Quincy Wilson, but that's 13 more. Let me, let me put it to you this way. I remember his dad one time tackling me. I tried to twist his shoe off his foot. <laughs> I wouldn't have hurt him. <laughs> There's no twisting on this thing. You, you come up to face Wilson. Wilson is going to finish the run. He's going to deliver a blow. He's delivered 77 yards already tonight. On just 14 carries, he's also scored a touchdown. His dad, Otis, still lives in Chicago. But Otis grew up here in the state of West Virginia. We talked about they don't have many prospects, but Quincy's from Weirton, West Virginia, led Weir High School to a state championship. He looked around a little bit, but he was intrigued by playing here for his home state university. He was in a pretty good class coming out of high school for running backs. William Green, T.J. Duckett, Julius Jones, among the other top running back recruits. Rasheed Marshall shoved out of bounds, a loss on the play, back to the 48-yard line. Kel Pee, the middle linebacker, junior from Columbia, Maryland, chased out Rasheed. But going back to Wilson, did you take a look at what he did his senior year in high school? More than 3,000 yards rushing, 47 touchdowns, as a high school senior, he told me it really wasn't fair. I was about 205 pounds, and I just ran over everybody. He's still running over yeah, people. It's still not fair. <laughs> Third down and eight. West Virginia with under four minutes left in the half, leading Virginia Tech 14 to nothing. This is a Hokey team averaging 45 points per game. Marshall has a man open, caught first down. Travis Garvin. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line. First catch of the night for the senior who missed their last game against Rutgers. And, and look at the timing of this. M Marshall steps, plants, the ball's on its way as soon as the receiver made his cut. And that is something they hadn't seen this season. Their passing attack was not good. Coming into the ball game, leading receiver, 11 grabs. Garden playing with a very heavy high. He had to leave the team before that Rutgers game. There's Wilson again. His cousin, who really was like a brother to him, they had lived together and been close their entire lives, was shot and killed in their hometown of Bradenton, Florida. Well, Travis left the team and did not play in the game against Rutgers. There, there you are, left guard, nothing special, sexy about this play. 76 has done this all night, Jeff Burke. Look at the push he has, and what it does is it just moves the chains, it sets the tempo. Little plays like that, sending a message to that defense. I tell you, the message they're sending is that we're pounding the heck out of you. They caught Virginia Tech not quite lined up. Marshall keeps on a quarterback sweep, then goes down to the 30. They'll need four more on third down. And the time becoming a factor now. Remember, each team has already burned two timeouts, so they can stop it once each 
And we're under three minutes left in the half. Physical, physical, physical. I go back to the Miami game. West Virginia believed that they were more physical than Miami in that ball game, and it has carried over into this one. A very well before down territory for West Virginia. They hope they don't need to go for it on fourth down. They'd like to pick it up right here. After the third, Marshall in trouble and throws in the direction of Wilson. Coles Colas had him around the knees. He did get it off. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and four from the 30. And we'll see what Coach Rodriguez wants to do. Will he try a long field goal? Yes, Kick he it. will. Kick it. Kick it. You know why? You, if you make this field goal, you get up by three scores here. Well, you get up by I'm going to give you a different opinion of this thing. You know why? You've got <laughs> Virginia Tank in the tank right now. And, 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 and their strength of their... That's right, man. If we know they block more than anybody in America. It's, it's not a gimme on fourth down. you got, you know, three, four yards to go here. So what? Just turn the ball over and play defense. Ah, get the third score. Make them have to score three times to beat you. You're going to be right, but I'm just telling you, I'm nervous <laughs> about it. High snap. Cooper's kick is not long enough and off to the right. But there's a flag down thrown at the feet of the kicker. Did they run into the kicker or rough him? It doesn't matter. If they ran into him, that ought to be enough to get a first down. It is running into the kicker. Frank Beamer, who coaches the special teams himself. Running into the kicker. Against the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Sometimes seeing those special teams make inspiring plays to ignite his team. Now they make a play that... Oh, boy. That keeps the West Virginia possession alive. That was more like sliding into the kicker and really uh, barely brushing him with a forearm on the leg. If that is a penalty, then we can put in the rule book. Wow. Ninth penalty against the Hokies. So it's first and ten from the 25-yard line. Two tight end. That's the most penalties that Virginia Tech has had in the game this year. Wilson fumbled the football. Picked up by Vegas Robinson. He got rid of the football. And now it's Vincent Fuller all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. That's what 60,000 people just said. Wow. <laughs> and, and I mean, Wilson is headed to a big game. He's got a big hole. He's going to, he, I mean, it just like that. He's had fumbling problems. He fumbled three times in their loss to Cincinnati. And that was a very costly fumble. You talk about turning the momentum of the game around. Fans roaring. They saw a replay on the screen. It looked like Vegas Robinson was down before he got rid of the ball to Vincent Fuller. And the ball should have been marked down near midfield. Well, look at that when we come back. The extra point up and good by Worley. And all of a sudden, it is a one touchdown game. Oh. Certainly he was down. He's down. He really lost the football on a fumble. But he was down. Point. That play should have been blown dead. because everybody in the stadium saw the replay you saw as we went to break, that Vegas Robinson was down before he fumbled, and the ball was picked up by Vincent Fuller. It should have been Virginia Tech's ball near midfield. We'll take a look at it again after the kickoff by Brandon Pace to K.J. Harris and Adam Jones. Comes down to Pac-Man Jones near the 10. And a nice run back to the 29. All right, this is simply a blown call. Wilson wide open, loses the ball. There's Vegas with it. Now watch when he goes down. He is... You're going to keep rolling, boys. There you go. He's down. He's down, He's down right there. He was down, but I tell you what, even before that, if, if he hadn't have fumbled the ball, he may have scored. Now, Wilson. Watch it from this angle. You'll see he's down right there, no doubt. Ball's coming out. He's down. Now watch it. The next angle, the official right there looking at it, didn't think he was down. There was the head referee, Jack Kramer, who was just a few yards away from Vegas Robinson. From the 29, first and 10. Wilson out to the 34-yard line, a gain of five. Under two minutes left in the half. Here's Reese. 
All right, Sean, coming up at halftime, we'll look at the potential impact of this game on the BCS standing, the schedules of the other two major unbeatens, and a look ahead to Maryland and Georgia Tech. Have a look at Oklahoma, 7-0, but have they played anybody yet either? I'll tell you about a big game in the SEC, Auburn versus LSU. Cadillac emerging as a Heisman Trophy candidate. We'll have that one Saturday night on ESPN, guys. And we'll look forward to it. Vegas Robinson made the stop on Quincy Wilson. Just one timeout left for each team as we run to a minute 20 left in the half. Let's go back to this play one more time. Now, look for the official on this thing. He's right on top of it. So he clearly doesn't believe that this ball, look at him. He's right there looking at it. Well, he missed it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Down. It was close. The ball came out shortly after when he went down, but it clearly was a case of he was down first and then the ball popped out. I'm a big proponent of instant replay. When you got it, use it. Well, they could have used it tonight. Rasheed Marshall did not get to the first down marker on third and three. Will Virginia Tech use a timeout? Yes. Charge timeout. With 47 seconds left. That's Tim your final Sandage, timeout. The backup defensive tackle made the stop on Marshall, and it was a big one. West Virginia will have to punt when we come back. 100 kicks, punts or kicks under Frank Beamer in his 17 years as coach of his alma mater. They blocked the field goal last week for the 100th block kick. 52 of them have been punts. Todd James got it off. The Angelo Hall crowd roaring. They wanted a clip. That seemed to occur right along the hash mark. There was no flag thrown. And Hall will return two punts for touchdowns against Syracuse in their last game. Returns that one for five. I, and I, we were in the meetings together. He, he was not supposed to punt the ball to D'Angelo Hall today, was he? Yeah, they worked on it all week, kicked the ball out of bounds at a different angle. I think that was clearly a mistake. Well, they got away with it. And how will Virginia Tech play it without a timeout? At their own 36-yard line and 35 seconds left in the half. Looks like they intend to throw it with four wide receivers and Randall working out of the shotgun. They're lucky to be down only by seven. I, I just go in at halftime and be happy. Randall, a couple of fakes, then throws short. And out of bounds goes Cedric Humes. No gain on the play, perhaps even a loss of a yard. And the clock shows 30 seconds left. That was a very careful play. Well, if you're going to keep being careful, I mean, just go on in at halftime. <laughs> you either throw it down the field or just go on in. I kind of, I, I agree with you, Ron. They're, they are fortunate to be 14 to 7. And don't even take a chance on letting West Virginia yeah. do something. And they've been outplayed by West Virginia for most of the half. As much as it was a bad call on the touchdown, Tech scored. Of course, it never would have happened had Wilson not fumbled. That pass thrown up for grabs and almost intercepted. They had a 14 0 lead with a chance to punch it in again when Wilson fumbled. That was the West Virginia turnover. But first, there was a couple of turnovers that led directly to two West Virginia touchdowns. And then the fumble by Wilson, the run back by Robinson. He was tackled. Lost control of the football, and Vincent Fuller picked it up and ran it the rest of the way. And, and these turnovers are a result of West Virginia being faster than what Virginia Tech has seen. All the points in this game off turnovers, 68 yards. The distance covered by Robinson and Fuller on the fumble return. Randall zings one, incomplete flag thrown against Mike Lorello. West Virginia sideline in an uproar. Lorello came over the back of Justin Hamilton. I don't know about that one either. That, that's a bad call. You know, you have a right to make a play on the ball. Yeah, I, I, I don't think these officials have had a great half. He's got a right to attempt to knock the ball away. And, and the receiver. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And on top of it, I don't believe the receiver was even in a position to make the play. Well, maybe again, they got him for the trip. Yeah, that or Hamilton's a good actor. But that's okay. inadvertent with feet down below. Yeah. 
They got him for the trip. The trip. But, but you do have the right to go make a play on the ball. Yeah, absolutely. But in the, that word inadvertent, which I never have understood, but when your feet get tangled up, you didn't really mean to do it like, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And here are seconds left in the half. Oh, he's sacked by Ernest Hunter, the sophomore from Burke, Virginia, in the Washington, D.C. area. Third sack of the night for West Virginia. It'll be the final play of the first half. Yeah, this is the chance you take when you're trying to throw the ball late. Second quarter, and, and that just, that kind of hit right there, it got the momentum back to your guys going to the locker room. Rich Rodriguez chatting with the referee, Jack Kramer, in the middle of the field as the teams run off. I wonder about what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank Beamer probably isn't all that happy either. I mean, his team was penalized nine times in the half. 14-7 at halftime. Here's Sam Ryan. All right, Frank Beamer, you got a little momentum going into the half. You may have caught a break there. It appeared Vegas was down. What did you see? Oh, I didn't. I couldn't tell. I thought it was a good play, but... Uh... You know, it's lucky for us there, but uh, they just outplayed us. They've got a, they've got 131 ground, yards on the ground right now. How do you stop the run? What do you, what kind well, of adjustments? They're coming right at us. You know, they spread you out and come right at you and at us, and uh, we got to toughen up. But I think it really gets back to our offense. You know, you turn the ball over and you don't pick up first downs. You leave your defense out there too long. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Halftime. Okay. Some touchdown runs by K.J. Harris and Quincy Wilson. Brandon Pace kicks off for Virginia Tech. He's a freshman from Virginia Beach. K.J. Harris and Adam Jones back for the kick. Here's Jones. He turned one 81 in the season opener against Wisconsin. And their season opening loss by a touchdown here in Morgantown. That's a 37-yard return tackled by Chris Caesar. We check the first half stats yeah right down here this that those penalties nine for 67 yards against Virginia Tech shows that they're not playing smart and that West Virginia is creating some opportunities and getting them out of position yeah and how about the 131 yards rushing for West Virginia against a defense that was only giving up 88 a game and they just took it to him in the first half 43 yards rushing for Virginia Tech but some of that is the sack yardage came off the rushing total. They had three sacks to the Mountaineers. Nice fake, but then a bad throw for the tight end, Torrey Johnson. Rasheed Marshall off the mark. Here's Sam Ryan. And, Sean, I spoke to Rich Rodriguez at the half. He told me, our defense is playing hard on offense. we got great field position. We just have to learn to finish now. He said, we should be up 14-0. We feel like we gave them a cheap one at the end. Sometimes you get those calls. Sometimes you don't. You just have to play through them, guys. Thank you, Sam. And I think that's a key for his team at halftime, guys. Don't dwell on what you might think is a bad call. Just keep playing. Play the next play. Nothing doing on second and ten. Quincy Wilson into the middle for no gain. Jonathan Lewis made the tackle with help from Brandon Manning. And Virginia Tech's defense has to make the statement here in this opening drive. That, and, you know, some people here are probably saying, why did he throw the ball on first down? It was a good call. He just overthrew the receiver. Mm -hmm. Third and nine. Pokey showing blitz. And then they move out of it as Michael Crawford resets. Just a four-man rush. Wide receiver screen. Chris Henry does not get the first down. Pokey's indicating the ball came out. It looked like it might have. They want the call. The officials have not signaled yet. And they say West Virginia ball. Fourth down. Well, this could be D'Angelo Hall time now on punt returns. Remember, special teams, we always think about blocks for Virginia Tech, but they can get big returns out of that guy. It better not be a return by him. I mean, if they do, they ought to fire the special teams coach and go get a new punter. Uh, I, I mean, he has been coached well this week to, to kick the ball away from D'Angelo Hall. He kicked one to him in the first half, though, and he got lucky. They got away with it. Todd James, who frequently rolls to his right rugby style before punting, stayed in his usual position and got it off, and no return for D'Angelo Hall. The ball down at the 25, a 32-yard punt. 
Scott Jerko downed it. We look back at some key plays, and the Mountaineer folks in the press box here at halftime were whining about the officiating, and you're looking at the reasons why. Well, I think what you want is consistency. On those first two plays that you saw, there was a quick whistle, lack of progress, they didn't get the fumble, and then on the fumble, there was not a quick whistle. You want them to be consistent on those, Craig. Yep. We should point out the Hokey folks weren't all that happy either, which means and perhaps they've done a good job. At least they've been equal opportunity upsetters of this officiating crew. Kevin Jones, the ball carrier, out to the 30 for a gain of six. And for Virginia Tech, they came into the game saying they were going to go two tights, pound them, and, and knock them off the ball, okay? They've got to come back now, and, and it's the gift is there. If they're in the ball game, they got to do it. Second and four. Randall under center. Randall out of 11 passing. Completes that one in the flat to the fullback, Doug Eastlick. And he's very close to the first down marker. Eastlick, one of those unheralded guys who does a lot and doesn't get much credit for it. When we talked to Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, he said he's our most underrated player. Great blocker particularly out on the perimeter, former state champion wrestler in high school in Marlton, New Jersey. Third down and less than a yard. This look wrestled for a while at Virginia Tech as well, but then decided to concentrate full-time on football. Two tight ends in the game. Deep handoff. I wonder about that play call to Jones. Took a long time to get him the ball deep in the backfield, and Adam Lenort and Ben Lynch we're right there to drop him for a loss. Lynch has been doing this all night. This defensive line is smoke in the middle of the field. Watch the penetration. Watch the push. Swim. Get rid of it. Linebacker comes through. They're dominating up front. <laughs> he shouldn't be able to do that. He's only 265 <laughs> pounds. He's playing against a guy who should be dominating him. Grove's a 300-pounder. He's, he's an All-American candidate. Then he burns to punt to Pac-Man Jones. They came after the punt, and Burns got it off very nicely. It is muffed by Pac-Man, and he dives on the ball back inside the five-yard line. A 63-yard punt when all was said and done because of the muff. They'll mark the ball at the six. Tough field position with which to begin for West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead 14-7 early in the third quarter. James Rod Gilmore, Sam Ryan, our producer Scott Matthews, director John McDonough leading our ESPN Wednesday night crew. First and 10 for West Virginia. The Mountaineers from their own six yard line. Second possession of the second half for WVU. Quincy Wilson. Tackled by Kevin Lewis and Vegas Robinson. Vegas Robinson involved in that fumble play and involved in this play as well. Hey, Craig, you see all of the guys in the box here. They've got nine guys in the box here cheating to get inside now. They had a two tight end information uh, formation, but you see now that's their tackle. They're going to try and cheat in, and then they'll come out if they have to in the pass. Second and nine. Marshall going deep. Has a man open. Travis Garvin. At the 30, he will score 93 yards. Touchdown, West Virginia. That's the answer to cheating in. <laughs> I was going to tell you. West Virginia University history, 93 yards. Cooper. Rides through the extra point. So Virginia Tech 
had momentum at the end of the half. It didn't last very long. An electrifying play made by Marshall and Garvin. Garvin, you remember the player who sat out there last game after his cousin was shot and killed. And he's been uplifted by the great support as we see from his teammates. And what a play he just made for them. Uh, you know what? And you said it right, right. I mean, you set it up. And there's the defense. They're nine men up there. And they're offering it up to that offense. They dared Marshall to do it. And he did it. Boy, did he. They worked on Michael Crawford that time. He's the rover. And they got Garvin on him. That's a mismatch. Crawford, an outstanding player and a veteran player, a senior in that secondary for Virginia Tech. You, you can see the secondary. Watch the way they are. Look, look at how, look at how, I mean, they come up supporting the play action. Yep, they have to. They have to respect it, and he got them. They were getting gashed in the first half. You know at halftime they talked about getting in the box, getting a little help, cheating in a little bit. And then when they got them spread out there, they worked on the rover, got a, match, a mismatch that they wanted, take your shot down the field. Rashid Marshall, who has struggled throwing the football. And Rich Rodriguez says, not just the quarterback. So we have a young and inexperienced line. We have had some injury problems for the rest of our offense. We have a young receiver core as well. They've had some depletions there, so you can't put it all on Marshall. Short kickoff and a tumbling catch made by Cedric Humes. He had to come running up after Cooper's kick into a little bit of a breeze came down at the 21-yard line. Well, well. Well, well to that offense at Virginia Tech. Here's an offense that has scored at least 35 points in every game this year, Virginia Tech. But prior to tonight, they played Central Florida, James Madison, Texas A&M, Connecticut, Rutgers, and Syracuse, and only Rutgers was on the road. And Texas A&M is about the only team that was really strong, and they're a young football team. From the 21. Play action pass. Randall pulls it down and runs. And slides down to the 23, forced to the ground by Grant Wiley, the All-American candidate at linebacker, a four-year starter. He had 15 tackles last year at Virginia Tech. There is a flag on the play. Wiley has forced six fumbles this year. That leads the nation. It's against Virginia Tech. He's averaged 14 tackles per game. That's third in the nation. And, and the flag the was on. Step ball, personal foul, gets the offense. Half the distance to the goal line, second down. And that's a personal foul on Wilford. Watch 19 here at the end of the play. He keeps going after the guy, hands to the head. And the very first play of the game, they threw a penalty flag on Pac-Man Jones for a shot after the play, and they're enforcing it again here. They're trying to control it, like you said, Craig. Ten penalties against Virginia Tech. Second down and 19. Doug Eastlick, the fullback. Just trying to get something back. Because the personal foul was after the play, the down counted. So this will be third down upcoming for the Hokies. Ben Lynch is absolutely dominating inside. I mean, and, and I don't I wasn't expecting that on the defensive line at West Virginia. Correct. Right. That's Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator at West Virginia. What a terrific job his group has done tonight. The only points by Virginia Tech were scored by the Virginia Tech defense. Third and long, they need to reach the 31-yard line. The ball snapped from the 13. Timeout call. We couldn't hear. Virginia Tech. The Hokies have two left. They couldn't hear. They're not in Blacksburg anymore. On here at Mountaineer Field. This is one of the loudest venues in college football, and they are roaring tonight. Third down and 18, the Mountaineers lead by 14 points. Virginia Tech in a third and long. D'Angelo Hall has not touched the ball on offense tonight for Virginia Tech. He's on the field. That ball is intercepted. 
Pac-Man Jones picked it off. The receiver had stopped. Jones brings it back to the 38-yard line. Kevin Jones made the tackle. Flags down after the tackle. There are two flags on the play. And the last flag is going to be on Pac-Man Jones for spinning the ball. That was dumb. <laughs> Come on. Unsportsmanlike conduct. But, you know, he's got that kind of attitude. I mean... And a clip on the return. Both flags against West Virginia. That's the good and bad of Pac-Man. I mean, he brings that attitude to them, and he'll deliver big plays and brings that toughness to them. But, you know, you got to take a little bit of that little extra sugar at the end of plays with him, too. Going to have to learn to bottle up that enthusiasm. <laughs> we have two penalties on the return team. We have a clip on the run back, 15-yard penalty. I have an unsportsmanlike penalty. At the end of the run, both penalties will be assessed. First down. So that'd be 30 yards in penalties against West Virginia. Bad decision here. This is a three deep coverage. It was that from the start, Craig. You and I talked about it even before. He lines up, but bails out of it. He's had yes. deep third responsibility. Wilford breaks off the route. That was a gimme. Yeah, Wilford should not have broken that route off, and he tried to side adjust on the deal. And there's no adjustment to it, and Pac-Man Jones comes up with a play. Now, if they would have been better off for him not to have caught that and forced a punt. Well, he no, could have caught it. It was the stuff at the end. Yeah, the penalties. penalties. Yeah, but I'm talking about 37 yards. Look at that. I mean, they would have punted from the 15-yard line. Yeah, but if they hadn't committed the the penalty, the clip, and then the 37 yeah. after the run back. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Sean. Not with Craig. Yeah, All I know is they are way back on this side yeah, now after they started to down on that of the interception. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're snapping the ball from the 32. <laughs> KJ Harris got back to the left and got two out to the 34 yard line. Well, Pac Man is excitable. We saw that in the game against Miami back on October 2nd, a Thursday night game. He got locked up with Kellen Winslow Jr., or the second, all night long, and they uh, spent a lot of time trash talking, and those two can jaw with the best of them. Uh, Pac Man Jones is not going to shy away from trash talking. He, he brings it with the best of them. Second and eight. Quincy Wilson back in there, rips through a hole, bounces off a hit, first down. To the 45-yard line of Virginia Tech, a 21-yard gain. Mikel McKee made the tackle. If Kevin Jones at Virginia Tech is a Heisman candidate, then what do you call this guy, huh? I mean, this, now that's running. That's effort. That's a, that's a, I'm not going down attitude. I'll say this. I've not seen anybody run harder than Quincy Wilson. And no, no one does. He's over 100 yards with 105 tonight, his seventh career 100-yard game. Got 177 in their win a week and a half ago against Rutgers. Charge timeout. High. Virginia Tech. Timeout called by Virginia All Tech. Number two. They're going to come from behind mode. The Hokies have just one timeout left. We were talking about Adam Pac-Man Jones. They call him Pac-Man. His mother gave him there the was no a toddler. There was no charge timeout. Toddler. There was no charge timeout. He used to attack the bottle and gobble it up like Pac-Man. You used to play that game, Craig. Right? I did. I did it so so often that I got tendonitis in my shoulder from, you know, working the machine. Is that Pac-Man? Miss Pac-Man. Now they say you there was well, no timeout well. called. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> they blew the whistle, pointed timeout, said timeout, but now they say there was no timeout. Miss Pac-Man was harder than Pac-Man. And he went after the ball, gobbled it up like that Pac-Man thing used to gobble him up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fruit. Hey, I'll tell you a little bit what ran Pac-Man Jones away from the chow table yesterday. Wilson, the ball carried to the 41 on first and 10. He got four. Wilson was back at that one-on-one -on -one battle between Pac-Man and Kellen Winslow. They were after each other all night long. Uh, he flipped the ball on Pac-Man. Pac-Man flipped it back and punched him back. They both were assessed fouls, but he's from the heart of Atlanta. You know, a hard part of town. He's not backing away from anybody. He's been there. 
high school teammate of Keith Adams who went on to Clemson. They both have their jersey numbers retired. Pass in the flat intended for K.J. Harris. Incomplete. Now, yesterday we had a chance to have lunch with a lot of the West Virginia players, and I had the privilege of sitting across from Pac-Man Jones. What do you think made him get up and leave the table? He ran from the table and left his food. You. <laughs> no. A big old roach ran across the table in front of his food, <laughs> and when the roach came out, Grant Wiley, the stud linebacker, squishes it quietly, oh. and he says, okay, we'll have no more of that. Oh. You didn't tell us about that. Oh. I know. We, we saved it. We didn't want to ruin everybody's lunch. Oh. That's bad, man. It was a great hit by Wiley, too. Wiley I mean, wham. Start. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, that's eight penalties on West Virginia. And Virginia Tech has been penalized 10 times. Well, we have a moment we want to send along a uh, hello to John Sophie, the director of officiating for the Big East, who was expected to be here tonight and apparently uh, not feeling well. Our pal Shelly Poe, the sports information director here at West Virginia. Let us know that John's not here, and we send our best. He might not be feeling any better after watching this tonight. No. Nope. No, we wish him well. He does a great job supervising the officials in the Big East. Out of the gun. Rasheed Marshall throws the near side, incomplete, intended for Travis Garvin, broken up by Vincent Fuller. Of course, one of the issues that has been raised when you have teams leaving this conference, as you do in the case of Miami, Virginia Tech, and Boston College, some coaches have quietly said, will we get the short end of the stick with the officials because we're leaving? And I think uh, that's a slippery slope to go down, and certainly it raises issues about the credibility of these officials, and that is totally inappropriate. And fortunately, that was squashed very quickly by the conference. The calls have been equally bad here tonight, yes. so I don't think that's much of an issue tonight. Yeah, the home team that's staying in this conference has been penalized nine times. Nice punt by Jack. Third in the major polls and third in the most important poll, the BCS poll. In trouble here in West Virginia. Trailing by two touchdowns. The beginning at its own eight-yard line. Randall had trouble with the snap. Well, Coach Beamer talked about how well he's played all year, but he's been shaky tonight. Two interceptions and an errant pitch to Jones, and he almost lost the snap there. He managed to turn it into a gain of three. Rod, I know in your film study, you really were looking forward to them seeing them run this speed option out of the shotgun, and it seems like they've gotten away from it. I think they're afraid of it. They had that fumble with Kevin Jones on the pitch earlier. They, they haven't gone back to it since then. And, you know, you made the point about their defense. They're shutting things down outside. Yeah, they got the outside support that's coming hard. And that, those extra wings out there really putting pressure on them. Nice run by Jones. He got through some traffic. And there's a late flag thrown after Jones had been tackled. Adam Lenort made the tackle. And it's against Virginia Tech. Might have been another hit after the whistle. Yeah. You know, before tonight, I don't think Virginia Tech had more than eight penalties in any game. You're correct. That was Grove. Jake Grove. Didn't he have center. another one earlier? Well, Grove has a reputation for being a dirty player. Personal foul. Gets the offense. After this is to the goal line. Third down. His, his teammates say that affectionately about him, but others in the Big East say that he will take a shot at you after the whistle. He says he plays to the whistle. That one was clearly after the whistle. Sean, isn't he a farmer, rancher, cowman? Grew yeah. up on a farm. Jake's from Forest, Virginia. Grandparents had a 200-acre farm. Ball back at the nine-yard line. And the down counts, so it's third down and about 10. Randall throws it for Jeff King, and he does not get to the first down marker. He got belted down by Scott Jerko. And the Hokies will have to park. The, the thing about defense, that when it's working, you're getting blue jerseys to the football, more than one. And, and there are about three of them showing up on that play. And part of that is that 3-3-5 three, three, defense. We've talked about it tonight. The speed on the outside. These guys can run to the edge and make plays. Then he burns to punt. Pac-Man Jones not back deep. He muffed the last punt, so 
They have Lance Frazier back now. This one's returnable. He catches it with plenty of running room straight ahead. And runs it all the way back to the 36-yard line, perhaps even the 35 of Virginia Tech, where Blake Warren made the tackle, the 47-yard punt. But the Hokies were slow to cover. It wasn't a particularly high kick. And Frazier brought it back for 22. Look at him just run past people. You know, sometimes you see these punt returners who will dance a little bit, but when they dart beyond the tackler, they usually have success. The surprising thing is that generally West Virginia special teams have played better than Virginia Tech tonight. In this tonight. game. Yeah, in this game. That is surprising. K.J. Harris, the tailback. He gets the call on first and ten. Trying to turn the corner after the bounce outside, and that speedy hokey defense wouldn't let him. And there's a flag for late hit out of bounds. Well, ordinarily, this is a very disciplined Virginia Tech team under Frank Beamer, but they have played very uncharacteristic football tonight. Pap, a part of that group, along with D'Angelo Hall, running K.J. Harris out of bounds and then throwing him down after they were well across the sideline. And that one was really dumb because they're right in front of the West Virginia bench. His progress was clearly Personal stopped. Foul. Personal foul. Gets the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And this one is so late, it's not even close. Hall makes the play. They've got him stopped. Now he's out of bounds. And they keep driving him. Tap just wouldn't quit. When they got to that white chalk over there, you just got to let up. And like you said, on that bench, and a bench that feels like they have had some plays go against them, they're going to get a favorable call. Though. Oh, yeah, they're, a questionable one. Uh, they're yelling at the official, you know, you owe me. <laughs> Tap's been an emerging player, sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. That Foster told us the other day how he has really stepped up and could be their next great defensive end. They've had some terrific ones. Engelberger and Moore and Brown among them. K.J. Harris tackled by Vegas Robinson. We started to mention a moment ago, Vegas Robinson, that unique first name. said, how'd you get the name? And that is not a nickname. That's his given first name. His mom liked the show Vegas. Remember that, Dan? No, Tana, Dan Tana. Okay, all right. Robert Garrett, the late Dating Robert ourselves Garrett. a little bit. And his middle name is Ferragamo because his mom liked Vince Ferragamo, the quarterback. Wow. Vegas Ferragamo Robinson. Who knew? And the question is, did the viewers really need the ball? That's for them to decide. Marshall banged out of bounds. Back of the 18-yard line by Brandon Manning. And that'll bring up third down. They need to reach the eight for a first down. Man, this has seemed like a long quarter. Longer if you're Rich Rodriguez. He'd like to see that clock go zipping along right now. Well, I think he'd be well served at this point to play, play for the field goal here. Go ahead and play for it. Run the ball back inside, play for it. You're baiting me. <laughs> <laughs> You're baiting me. Filling the role of Mike Golick tonight is Craig James. <laughs> <laughs> Here's K.J. Harris, so much for the field goal, he's down at the two. But there are flags down. They were thrown right along the line of scrimmage. Mikel Bakee, the middle linebacker, made the tackle against Virginia Tech. It'll be first and goal for West Virginia. Penalties decline. First down. How many penalties now? 12? Well, that one would have been the 13th wow. had they accepted it. And, you know, the thing about it, this, this backfield tonight, is we said Quincy Wilson, but it's K.J. Harris also. It's the one-two punch, and they're both power. They're both speed. They're both bouncers. And remember what Harris said yesterday. He didn't believe that Virginia Tech, when they tackled, that they put a body on you. He thought they were arm tacklers. He said he was going to run extra hard because he could break arm tackles. Two tight ends in the game. Wilson, the tailback. Stacked up at the line, driving. Back to the two. Nathaniel Adibi and Mikel Bakee. Combined on the stop on Wilson. Boy, he's got some serious leg drive. He just doesn't quit. He runs hard. He's, I mean, he's got three guys on his back, and he carried them back to the middle of the field. Yeah. Look like a wheelbarrow. He just rushed for 108. 
as a team. West Virginia has rushed for 176. They ran for 170 against Miami. They've run the ball effectively against some terrific defenses. Wilson, not this time, pulled down by Vegas Ferguson. Uh, Vegas Ferguson. I knew I was going to call him that before the night was over. <laughs> Just Vegas call him Ferragamo. Robinson. Did you play with Vegas Ferguson? <laughs> yeah, I played against him. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would happen once tonight. Just call him Ferragamo. You won't have a problem Vegas. with him. Yeah, I got his first name right. Now we don't know how he got the last name. Number six made a nice tackle. <laughs> Just call him Vegas. <laughs> That's putting the body on somebody. That's that was strong arm tackle. Man, exactly. Hey, Virginia Tech needs to step it up here. This is a number three team in the country. Their defense has to step up and stop them here. And West Virginia took a long time to get this play and personnel in. Clock running down to three. Marshall. Touchdown. That play was worth waiting for. to be another hit after the play was over. The ball, what's the foul? Get your defense. Cut down six. Frank Beamer's team is totally unglued right now. And Sean, it started on the very first play when the crowd became a problem. A fumbled snap to start the game, a delay of game penalty, and it's been that way all night long for their offense and their defense. I, I tell you what, you, if you, I'm glad I put the snooze button on my door at my room. I don't want anybody going there and get my couch out of my bed. Light it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for kindling right now here. <laughs> and the extra point up and good from Brad Cooper. They've run the ball so well inside. They bite on it. Virginia Tech does. Easy opening outside for Marshall. And, and Hall hits him in the end zone. I mean, that's just, that's knucklehead. Uh, this defense, like you said, it is unglued right now. This team's unglued. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that West Virginia just outplayed them. They've been more physical. And that man's team has been totally undisciplined. You know, he was worried, guys, as they won their first five games of the year. You look at the scoring drive, Marshall, with his first touchdown rushing of the season. He was worried after the first five games because they were playing inconsistent football. But he felt like they really put a complete game together against Syracuse. They beat a good Syracuse team, 51-7, to did the Hokies in Blacksburg in their last game. But talk about coming right back with a stinker tonight. Well, this has been dreadful for Virginia Tech virtually from the start. And there are a lot of one-loss teams around the nation watching this with great interest and glee. At the moment, the Virginia Tech loss would brighten the hopes for an appearance in the national championship game for somebody else. And you also wonder, are they looking ahead to Miami a week from Saturday when we talk with... Frank Beam in the plays. They all said, no, we know West Virginia's dangerous. They beat us last year in our building. They almost beat Miami and should have this year. So we know what's at stake at West Virginia. If we don't take care of business, they can beat us. Well, they are clearly frustrated right now. Virginia Tech is. There's no question about it. They've all come unglued at this point, and the crowd is not helping them at all. Yeah, from the top to the bottom. The personal foul penalty on the touchdown assessed on the kickoff, so Cooper will just drive it out of the end zone. You want to see frustration, Craig? Take a look at this. How uncharacteristic is this of Frank Beamer? Ooh. He snaps, slaps Wilford. Well, and Wilford is like not, ha no, not happy, happy about it. And then Beamer tries to grab him. He wants nothing to do with him at that point. You saw the shot of Wilford a little bit earlier. He's ticked off now, too. Well, you know, that's very uncharacteristic of Frank Beamer. We talked about the team being good, and he lost it there a little bit, too. You have to Absolutely. Play. There's just an assistant coach at Indiana who was reprimanded by the school for slapping a player in the helmet during the game. There are some places where that is not tolerated at all. Very out of character for Frank Beamer. Pass is caught by Keith Willis. And he goes out of bounds out at the 
38 yard line. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia, where they love their Mountaineers, and perhaps never more than right now, as they lead number three, West Virginia, 28 to seven. With time running out in the third quarter, Sean McDonald with Rod Gilmore, Craig James, and Sam Ryan. A chilly night. With the temperature dipping down into the 30s. And a chilly night for the Virginia Tech offense as well. Just 180 yards of total offense. Ball three. Juggled and then gathered back in by Randall. Adam Lenort. Credited with the tackle at the 41. That's at least the third fumbled snap tonight. And, and when you think about it, just about in every phase we've seen this Virginia Tech team have problems. The penalties stand out more than anything, but some turnovers, their poise is just not there at all tonight. And, not here. And a lot of that has to do with, with Lynch and that defensive line. They're smacking Grove and the offensive line of Virginia Tech. Second and seven. And movement. Right over center. Okay. Ben Lynch has had a good night at the nose. Right and stop. Offside. Defense. Contact foul. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, uh, you know, he uh, give him a little pub here and he <laughs> but he's got to not listen. He's been doing a good job of seeing the football throughout the night, but He's coming off, and that center knows he's coming off. Second down and two. Under two minutes left in the third quarter now. Hokies down by three touchdowns. Is that a lateral? No. Incomplete pass intended for D'Angelo Hall. Lance Frazier was moving up quickly. <laughs> you know what that meant? Frazier. delivers a blow. <laughs> Well, Lance Frazier told us yesterday, he's never really had a big hit. Can't think of one. This, my friend, is a pretty big hit. Watch this one here. And, and how about 19 Wilford? You know what? He may need his helmet slapped around a little bit. Beaver's trying to get his head in the game. Wilford's one of the best players at Virginia Tech. He's trying to get him playing. Yeah, he missed that block, and I, I think it's because he was upset and frustrated. Third down and two. They haven't been able to get the ball to D'Angelo Hall tonight. This one's caught for a first down in West Virginia territory. Justin Hamilton to the 43. And here's a team, guys, that likes to do it primarily on the ground. They really haven't been able to run the ball at all tonight. You could say for a while they didn't even try. Well, you know, but they just need one score. If they get one score and they maintain their poise, then they're only a couple plays away from getting back in the ball game. They need a score, but they've got to keep their poise. They've lost it totally here in the second half. Play action pass by Randall down the sideline, incomplete, looking for Justin Hamilton. It'll be second down and 10. Sean, and I do think it's time to throw the football. Like you said, the run hasn't been working. They got to come up and try to throw. throw. He's thrown 18 times now. 12 out of 18 passing is Randall for 130 and two interceptions. Rich Rodriguez trying to fire up the crowd again. Randall, take the pass in the flat, going deep for Will Turner, it's intercepted. Brian King has it back for West Virginia. His second interception of the night, the third thrown by Randall. Almost identical to his first interception. But King's just smart. He's not. He, he sees the quarterback, sees the play, and the play action. The question I would have now, guys, is Randall, as Frank Beamer said, has had a great year prior to tonight. But do you think about coming off the bench with Marcus Vick the next time they get the ball back? Well, on the road in a hostile environment, when you bring a young man in here like this, you know that's that's going to be asking quite a bit from him, especially when you're not getting any help up front. Yeah. Yeah, you're at, you would be asking him to save your your season, your hopes at a BCS championship game. And I don't think that's quite fair. You'd like to see Randall work his way through some of this stuff, too. Fourth turnover. Randall's been involved in all four of them. Ripping through. Quincy Wilson. All the way out. 
out to the 41-yard line. D'Angelo Hall saved another 90-yard-plus touchdown. They scored on a 93-yard touchdown pass not long ago to the Mountaineers. That's a 33-yard run by Wilson. And, and, and just running past people. That offensive line, hat on hat, Rod, they're just controlling the game. You heard Trev Albert say at halftime he wanted to see some guys get off blocks. We haven't seen it. We heard Trev Albert say a lot at halftime. <laughs> Mark May's going to smack him one day. I mean, it's just going to be smoke city. <laughs> 139 yards rushing now for Wilson. Here's understudy K.J. Harris out to the 43, perhaps the 44. D'Angelo Hall chopped him down. It's the double whammy effect, though. K.J. Harris and Quincy Wilson. See, while he's getting water over here and charging the tank up, you got a guy out there keeping the pressure on the defense. Well, after the, the run he made against Miami on that screen pass, I think we all knew he was a special player, that he was a hard-running running back. At least folks in Miami knew it. They saw it live. <laughs> Harris is rushed for 67. They're over 200 yards combined. Harris slipped down as he made his cut on the final play of the third quarter. The Mountaineers sprinting to the other end of the field, getting ready for the fourth. The images of a memorable night for West Virginia and a frustrating night for Virginia Tech, but still 15 minutes left here in Morgantown. 14 to West Virginia in that quarter, and the Mountaineers take a 21-point lead to the fourth, and they have the ball at their own 45-yard line. Third down and three. Out of the eye. Wilson, first down. Guys, excuse me, K.J. Harris for the first down. They've run hard, but we can't say enough about this offensive line. Beleaguered all year. Guys in and out of the lineup. Very young and inexperienced. And facing their toughest test tonight. You could say as tough, perhaps, as what they faced this year. And really dominating right now. And you've got a freshman at the center spot who's just been fantastic for them. Harris again across midfield. A gain of two. Mikel Baki, the tackler. Here's Sam Ryan. And then K.J. Harris, the oldest member of the Mountaineers, a 24-year-old junior, and the father of four-year-old Khaleesi told me at first she thought every football player on the field was K.J. and would call them all daddy but can now recognize his number one. He told me after the Miami game, the first thing she told him was, Daddy, you dropped the ball. Well, perhaps she'll remember his touchdown catch tonight, guys. Indeed, she likely will. He spent time playing minor league baseball with the Texas Rangers, then on to junior college before coming here to West Virginia. Quincy Wilson back in there. He stopped at the 46, so it'll be third down and six. Rich Rodriguez content to keep this ball on the ground and run some time. Rick Trickett is the offensive line coach here. Remember Rich Rodriguez making a comment about him? Hey, he, he goes, he's an old schooler. So he's and he's kept this offense in the country. Yeah, he did. Imagine. You know, and he's been here a couple of different times at West Virginia. Marshall, letting the play clock run down under 10. Now looking to the sideline for some guidance. And now a timeout was the indication from Rich Rodriguez. Oh, yeah, so much for Who's that, out. Mark May saying that? <laughs> Let the clock run down? That's what that running the clock down will do for you, big hog. <laughs> Each team with two timeouts left. Back to Morgantown after this. The lousy golfer in retirement. Third down for his old team, and Rasheed Marshall could not get away from Coles Colas. And West Virginia will punt from midfield. Coach Nealon's successor, Rich Rodriguez, has to be delighted with what's going on here tonight. Hard to figure his team. You know, they played so well against Miami and West Virginia, you wonder why couldn't they have done this against some of the other teams? Well, I think you start talking about their offensive line and how some of those guys were being banged up and some were young. They're being oh, right. And Todd James got it off. Here's D'Angelo Hall. Could they use a big return from him? Well, they won't get it. He's piled up. 
by a long snapper, Scott Fleming, at the 22-yard line as we check game track. Well, it's been Quincy Wilson all night long just rolling through this defense, running as hard as any back in the country, and they haven't been able to handle him. And then Randall has had his problems. Yeah, he, he's had his problems, but this is a, a team that's always been out of sync and randall was out of sync too and every time he tried to do something he really got in trouble but it was just a it was a, it's been a tough night for both trenches first and ten hokies they need three touchdowns randall throws on target to ernest wilford for an apparent first down at the 33 yard line the question I would have for you guys is what, if anything, can they do differently, the Hokies, to get something going? Well, I think offensively they're doing what they have to. They're throwing the football, but I think the real change is going to have to come on defense, and they got to get a play in the special teams area. Something's going to have to happen to change momentum for them. They can't do it just lining up. You think maybe they can get Wilson and those guys to go take a break and go to the locker room <laughs> get off offense? <laughs> That's about their only shot is getting Wilson off the field. Well, here's a Virginia Tech defense thought to be one of the best in the country, and they've been run over tonight by a West Virginia team that's been one of the worst offensive teams in the Big East. Randall whistled down back at the 28-yard line. Jason Hardy, a backup defensive end, junior from San Mateo, California, credited with the sack. I can tell you one thing that, that I might change is I wouldn't be stepping up behind the center. I'd move the pocket right now. Yeah. And, and maybe that's where Vic would really help them is his ability to get around the corner. So Randall could do that, but they can't sit him in the pocket. Yeah, and they can't put that man in the ball game right now. He's been on the sideline for, what, four hours now? And it's cold. Yeah. Sitting down to 11 and a half minutes left. Randall keeps, and is chopped down in the open field, well short of the first down marker by Lance Frazier. No, no. Chopped down at the 33, that'll bring up third down, they need about 10, 10 and a half to move the chains. It's that man again, Frazier. <laughs> He's had a good night, this entire defense has had a terrific night, the Virginia Tech offense has not scored, the touchdown was scored by their defense if you tuned in late. On a controversial fumble return. They've been three plays and out three times in the second half. This is one of their longest drives in the second half. Just about a half to convert third down situation here. Randall zings it and it's dropped. By Ernest Wilford. He had first down yardage. He was about a yard beyond the marker, but did not catch it. Before the game on the field, talking to a professional scout from one of the big guys, right, in here, and I asked him who the best players on the field were, et cetera. Wilford's one of them that he pointed out right away, and he's not having a good game. Nope. And your stars on the road when you're down, they got to perform. Well, and he's a senior. You want your seniors to handle this atmosphere, but it's been a tough night for him, and I'm sure he's still thinking about some of the things that have happened on the sideline. He was the one that smacked in the helmet by Frank Beamer. We'll be interesting to see how much of an issue is made of that in the coming days. 36-yard punt, four-yard return. Time running out on Virginia Tech's undefeated dream. Since the big upset, West Virginia, two-touchdown underdog leads by three touchdowns with ten and a half minutes to play. And the Mountaineers, who've moved the ball on the ground all night long, have it first and ten at their own 34. Quincy Wilson... The head for two. That's one of the least eventful runs of the night for Quincy. Yeah, but he's delivered tonight. <laughs> Boy, did he deliver on that one. This man runs as hard as anybody in the country. Well, he's, he's pumped life into that offensive line that was supposed to be suspect. And K.J. Harris, you know, don't leave him out of the equation either. He's run the ball well. Well, I think they feed off one another and they set the tone, certainly for that offense. 227 yards rushing against this highly touted Virginia Tech defense. Wilson again. 
into the line, but they're content now just to run clock. I think they will start to heed Mark May's advice, guys, and run that play clock all the way down to the end, or at least they should. Well, I'm just hoping that the security folks around here are heeding the advice they've been getting for days and making sure they secure things around here because there's going to be a big party afterwards. Well, the party started about 4 o'clock this afternoon for most of the students. Uh, many of them didn't even go to class. Well, there was a big line at a it was convenience a, yeah. stores we were driving up the it's a well hydrated they were body. for a slurpee and they're well hydrated <laughs> i think this is the goalpost game for those folks <laughs> well let's hope if this does stay this way and west virginia pulls off the upset that the people conduct themselves in an appropriate manner coach rodriguez has been asking that all week in the local media no matter what the result of the game is win or lose conduct yourselves with class and be proud and let's hope, regardless of the outcome, that is the case here tonight. Absolutely. You wouldn't want to see anything diminish what could be a great night for this football program less than nine minutes from now if it stays this way. Well, I do believe that if this is going to change for Virginia Tech, they've got to make a play in this area, special teams, a return or a block. They need something to happen, and it better happen soon. Well, and again, he's been coached not to kick it to D'Angelo Hall. James the punt, the angel of Hall, nothing. Well, it's the Virginia Tech special teams that get all the pub, but it's West Virginia special teams that have done a great job tonight. Abraham Jones with that tackle. Week, he said this situation reminded him a lot of 1999 when his team came in here to Morgantown undefeated with Michael Vick, inching closer toward a possibility of playing in the BCS National Championship game. West Virginia was just a little bit out of sync, but had a lot of talent. He said, I see the same thing again with West Virginia. They're better than their record indicates. Well, in 1999, his team came from behind to win on the last play of the game, but they weren't this far behind. And Randall was taken down. He got across the line of scrimmage before he was taken down by Pat Liebig, a freshman from Naples, Florida. Reserve defensive end. And that's a coverage sack. West Virginia is not giving up anything deep. Mm -hmm. They're really laying off, and they had everybody covered. And everybody and, went deep. Yep. Virginia Tech's in everybody deep, and, and Randall's not moving the pocket. I, I'd make a call that gets him out of the pocket on the perimeter to throw the football. Four wide receivers spread the field. Randall spins down at the 34-yard line. Flag thrown in the middle of the line. Offsetting personal foul penalties. I don't know. I've just never seen a Virginia Tech team become, you know, this undisciplined with penalties. Live ball, personal foul, gets the offense. Live ball, personal foul, gets the defense. Penalties offset, still second down. Of course, last year midseason, they went into a skid. Lost to West Virginia prior to that. They wound up with four losses last year. But that skid last year, Sean, was because they had a lot of injuries on defense and people ran on them. That's not the case tonight. They were pretty healthy coming into this ball game. They've just been pounded tonight. Well, an even tougher schedule upcoming with Miami and Pittsburgh waiting in the wings. Thrown to the near side. Wilford the catch. Or rather, Chris Clifton the catch. Reserve wide receiver and sometime quarterback. And Lance Frazier was up quickly to knock down Clifton. He made just his third catch of the year. Well, we're down in four. If Adam Jones is called Pac-Man, we'd have to call Frazier the uh, the Bang Man or something. I mean, you obviously didn't play a lot of video games. You've no. you got to come up with another video a game. A video game, does it have to be relevant with video world? Yeah, if you're going to use Pac-Man, you got to come up with another video game instead of Pac-Man. Stone Man? Run taking forever to develop and nothing doing. Cedric Humes. <laughs> Got just across the line of scrimmage. They have to go for it now, don't they, fellas? They're sending the punting unit on, but you got 6.20 to go. You need three touchdowns. Yeah, and but... It's only three yards to go for a first down. I think you got to kick it. It could get embarrassing here. 
you go I, for I, this. I'd be less worried, Rob, about being embarrassed yeah. than I would be about trying to keep whatever hopes I have of going undefeated and being in the national championship game alive. Uh, I don't know. I'd kick it away here, too. I'd I'm, go for it. I think my I'm own 35-yard line. Six minutes to go, three touchdowns. And two timeouts left. And uh, add insult to injury, a horrible punt. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Just a 17-yard punt. And the way West Virginia is running this football, who knows when or even if Virginia Tech will get it back. West Virginia on the verge of the biggest upset in the history of the program. You saw the graphic a moment ago. The highest ranked opponent they've ever defeated was number four in the nation. They've done that twice. Virginia Tech number three in all of the major polls this week, including the BCS, averaging 45 and a half per game. They've scored seven tonight, and that was a defensive score. K.J. Harris. And guys, if it stays this way, here's another lovely parting gift from a school that's going to remain in the Big East, in this case, West Virginia, to a departing school, Virginia Tech, which next year will begin play in the ACC. We saw Syracuse pummel Boston College last week into the Carrier Dome. Syracuse staying in the Big East, Boston College departing. A lot of talk about that. I don't know that it means very much to the players. The players we talked to yesterday basically said, hey, we know we can beat this team. We're motivated to deal with them. I don't think they worry so much about uh, uh, Virginia Tech leaving the Big East. So they just feel like they're better than they are. I think the presidents and the athletic directors and perhaps the coaches have uh, some animosity. There's no doubt about that. Right. And I think my advice, guys, to all of those people involved in this press would be to just be quiet. You know, there really haven't been many people who've covered themselves in glory in this process. So, for example, the folks at Syracuse, the chancellor, uh, Buzz Shaw, and the athletic director, Jake Cardinal, were saying they were personally offended by what Boston College did. I mean, uh, they themselves were hosting the folks from the ACC and talking about joining that conference. What are they offended about? It's big business. It's nothing personal money. with anybody. Yeah, it's all about money. That's why I think they should all be quiet. Let it all play out however it's going to play itself out. And don't be casting aspersions at other people when you're just as guilty of uh, what you're accusing other folks of. A lot of hypocrisy throughout this entire process. Wilson carries for a first down, an 11-yard run on third down and eight. He goes to the 40-yard line of West Virginia. Or of Virginia Tech, pardon me. Jeff Burke has had a great night at guard. A little bit hobbled back near the line of scrimmage. And he's being helped off the field. He's had a terrific night, the junior from Hubert Heights, Ohio. And, and I believe if, if I were handing out a game ball right now, it wouldn't be to Wilson. I know he's done a nice job. It'd be the offensive line. You know, Wilson would get one of mine. I'd give it to an offensive lineman as well, but Wilson would have to get a game ball. If you only got one ball, uh, he gets the thing. <laughs> but, 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 but that offensive line, who has been talked about, questioned, they haven't performed. I hear you. They came out and they gave them the hole. I, I hear you. And you can say the same about Marshall, who threw the ball well tonight. But for me, Wilson established the tone, the way he ran hard. He was so physical. And he was not intimidated by the Virginia Tech defense. We talked about the players may not care. Those are the fans you hear chanting ACC, ACC at the Atlantic Coast Conference bound Hokies. This rivalry will continue on. They're scheduled to play at least a couple of more seasons. They play for the Black Diamond Trophy, which is a reference to this region's history with the coal industry. And that Black Diamond Trophy is going to be here in Morgantown for the next year, barring the miraculous turn of events now. K.J. Harris the ball carrier. You know, Sean, I, we're about three minutes and 30 seconds away from what I think will be another example of a goalpost game. Goalpost coming down. They better folks, if you're here in Morgantown, don't burn the couches. Don't set the fire. It's tradition. Win with class. Don't yeah. diminish a great performance by your players and your coaching staff. They're going to try and protect those goalposts, but I don't, I don't see that happening. 
to the 35 yard line. Wilson and the clock runs under three minutes remaining. Now guys the question I would have as we uh, take a look at the BCS standings brought to us by Allstate would Virginia Tech be officially dead do you think tonight I mean they were third they do have games at Miami yeah, Pittsburgh I think they're dead yeah. because they're not going to have enough standings in the, in the rankings to get them back up there Virginia Tech losing tonight they can kiss it goodbye well they get killed by that but their strength of schedule is also so poor they're going to fall behind all these one loss teams in the BCS in my opinion I don't think they have a shot at getting back in it Marshall lost the snap well, there are an awful lot of one-loss teams that are doing a little dance tonight. But there's a lot of football to be played. All those teams are just worried, guys, about winning out. It is. And, and, and there's hope now. And that's really what the coaches will say. You've got a chance, fellas. Everybody has one loss. Just keep your game going. But how about West Virginia? Last year, they almost, oh, they got beat pretty good by Miami, but they won four in a row. They almost beat them this year, and look what they're doing. They won six of their last seven to the Mountaineers last year to go to the Continental Tire Bowl, where they lost to Al Groves. Virginia Cavaliers and they're hoping to go on a similar run this year their schedule was looking a little daunting they have Central Florida but then BC Pitt Syracuse still the play Wilson for another first down on fourth down and six he got 14 and the party begins in earnest now on that sideline as they douse coach Rodriguez with that Gatorade bucket. Think back to the shots of him, guys, on October 2nd in Miami. He said, I felt like I got kicked in the stomach at the end of that game. His team seconds from a huge upset, lost on a last second field goal. There'll be no such feeling for him tonight. But how about the feeling for this guy that, that years ago was coaching at a small school where they were just excited to get first downs. You know, they were talking about, let's just score some points. And now he's out here beating the number three team in the country. He's got his team in the victory formation. Well, we wondered if Virginia Tech would get the ball back. They will not. Marshall takes an E. Biggest win of Rich Rodriguez's coaching career in this his third season as head man of his alma mater, the Mountaineers. Oh, uh, they're going to be some couches on fire oh, tonight. Say that. Uh -huh. Let's hope they're on. Let's hope they're not. Hey, that's a tradition around here. It's what they do. Well, it's a, just because something is a tradition doesn't make it a good idea. And the fire department has gone to great lengths to prevent that from happening tonight. We can only hope their efforts are successful. to snap it again. Craig Beamer and the Hokies knocked from the ranks of the undefeated. And the students storm the field here in Morgantown. <laughs> Biggest win ever for the Mountaineers in terms of the ranking of the opponent as West Virginia defeats the third-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. And there was nothing fluky about this, guys. They earned this. It was a good old-fashioned one. It was a physical ball game. They ran the ball down the throats of the Virginia Tech defensive men all night long. The win gets West Virginia to three and four. Certainly does a lot to strengthen their hopes for a bowl game. And Virginia Tech drops to six and one. West Virginia had 426 yards of offense, 264 on the ground. Led by Wilson, who had 178 yards rushing, and Harris had 77. There's contemplation going on about those goalposts, but I think the wisdom of the students is, uh, yeah, I better stay away from these guys. So far, yeah. We'll have more of the post-game scene and coverage on tonight's game within Sports Center, which comes your way next. Once again, the final score here in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mountaineers 28 and the Virginia Tech Hokies 7. Now for Rod Gilmore, Craig James, Sam Ryan, and our entire ESPN crew, Sean McDonough saying good night from jubilant Morgantown, West Virginia. Sports Center is next.
The scene continues jubilant here in Morgantown, West Virginia, with fans flooding the field. One of the great wins in the history of the West Virginia program, and in terms of the rank of the opponent, the biggest win. They've never defeated a team ranked this high. You knew they had a chance, guys. It didn't seem like a great chance, but they played Miami to the final seconds and almost pulled off the upset a couple of weeks ago against the Hurricanes. They beat this Virginia Tech team at Blacksburg last year. Well, well they I, beat them, and they beat them bad, didn't they? It was yeah, all physical. And it was really one of those games where we were on the field before the game, and we felt like this was going to be a game where Virginia Tech would pound West Virginia's little soft 3-3-5 defense. Well, <laughs> everybody forgot to tell West Virginia they were going to get pounded because yeah. Virginia Tech could not stand up to West Virginia. They couldn't stand up to Quincy Wilson, who was outstanding. He really ran the ball down their throats tonight. He had 178 yards rushing. For the night, West Virginia had 426 yards of total offense. They had 264 of that on the ground. It does raise the question, was Virginia Tech overrated? They really hadn't played anybody before tonight. You really have to be battle-tested, and anybody who doesn't believe that's crazy. When you go out and you're starting to play people in your conference, it's a rivalry game, and you aren't ready for it. The speed of West Virginia tonight took control of Virginia Tech. Well, they talk about the speed, but they were really very physical, too. I mean, you have to hand it to West Virginia. Up front, on both sides of the ball, they dominated Virginia Tech. Look at the way they finished runs with Wilson. K.J. Harris, he finished runs. The defense, they sacked Randall every time they got an opportunity to throw the ball. They made plays down the field. They dominated the line of scrimmage throughout the night. There was nothing phony about this. West Virginia was simply a more physical, a bigger, better football team than Virginia Virginia Tech tonight. So many uncharacteristic aspects of this game for Virginia Tech, four turnovers. They had 13 penalties in the football game. We saw Frank Beamer lose his cool on the sideline, smack one of his players in the helmet. The other coach is very happy somewhere down in that mess with Sam Ryan as Rich Rodriguez. Well, that's right. Rich Rodriguez with the ear-to-ear -ear grin, the biggest yeah. win in your career, the biggest upset for your team. What does this victory say about your guys? Well, I'm really proud of our guys. We hung in there all year. We've had some tough losses, but our guys never quit. The work ethic has been super, and the attitude has been super, and they really played hard today and played well against a very good football team. I'm really proud of them. On both sides of the ball, they dominated this one. Quincy Wilson, what can you say about his game tonight? Well, he did a great job. You know, Kevin Jones is a great back, but we think we had a pretty good one ourselves. And I, everybody was kind of talking about Miami and Virginia Tech, and, and Little West Virginia was maybe a little bit forgotten about. And today, I think our guys made some noise. How much did you guys feed off of the Miami game coming into this one? Well, it gave us some confidence. You know, right now, obviously, we think we should be undefeated in the Big East, but Miami got the win. But our guys were confident coming in. I knew we'd play hard because of the great crowd we have and the atmosphere. But our young guys hung in there, made plays. And, and as I said, this hopefully this will propel us to a few more wins. You talk about the atmosphere, a hostile environment they call it here. What can you say about your fans? Our fans were super. I think they really played an impact today because I think Tech had some problems with their cadence. They had some communication problems on their center quarterback snaps and it made a big impact for our defense. Rich Rodriguez, congratulations. Thank you very much. Sean? All right, Sam. And I, I talked Ben, thanks very much. Rich Rodriguez live talking about a huge win, the biggest ever, at least in terms of ranking. I'll shut up so you can hear what he's got to say. I'll watch some film and, and tell you for sure in a, a day or so if, if they really did miss him. But uh, they were a couple that, obviously, the touchdown was, was a critical one and, and one or two others that there was one that was stopped. Progress was stopped, we thought. Well, that's what they said, but the whistle didn't blow. And so I, I don't know. We'll have to watch the film, but it... Uh, other than after the first half, I thought it wasn't as much. Was question. Well, I don't know. I'm in a physical ball game. We had a few of them, too. We got to get smarter than that. But I think in a physical ball game, especially when maybe things aren't going as well as you like, you know, sometimes emotions come out. Well, I, you know, I was surrounded by a couple of friends and the troopers and all that, but uh, they were excited. You know, a couple of people got sprayed with that pepper spray and stuff. I think we protected the goalpost, didn't we? But uh, I, you know, it's, I didn't think it was that bad. The fans, they're excited. It was a big win, and and uh, hopefully they'll all, you know, go go to bed early night and go to class tomorrow. <laughs>